ASL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. KSL News Time is 5 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Amanda Dixon. Tim has the day off. KSL's top story this morning. We've hit the average for water in our yearly snowpack, and we've got more snow on the way. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our team coverage March storms. Adam? Amanda, if you take every statewide snowpack recorded in Utah's history, the average amount of water we have waiting to come down in the spring is about 16 inches of water. And within the last few days, we hit that, meaning any more snow we get from here to next month is just icing on the cake, or in this case, our yearly water supply. And of course, we do have more coming. Starting today, uh, we're looking at potentially uh, about an hour from now, potentially through the end of the morning drive, we could potentially start to see valley rain and mountain snow set in. This storm is going to linger over the Wasatch Front through tomorrow Uh, We're looking at potentially a quarter to a half inch of rain in the valleys, maybe a trace to an inch of snow once that sets in, more so tomorrow. The mountains could get another foot to a foot and a half of snow. And, of course, we've still got a few weeks before peak snowpack in early April. Reporting live, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. The Utah Avalanche Forecast Center is warning about unstable snow slabs following four human-triggered avalanches over the weekend. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kikuchi reports, continuing our team coverage, March storms. The slab avalanches were shallow but are still dangerous and can be tricky to see, according to the center's Greg Gagney. There could be similar situations following the storm later today and tomorrow. Terrain where if you got caught even in a small avalanche, it could be consequential. So these weren't big avalanches, but they were in consequential terrain. Gagney says the storm is expected to bring high winds. Skiers and snowboarders will want to avoid fresh, wind-drifted snow that's firm and has a chalky appearance. The situation will be especially bad above 9,500 feet. Tammy Kikuchi, KSL News Radio. Several bills designed to help renters in Utah failed to get through the state legislature. Representative Marsha Judkins proposed the bills and spoke to KSL TV about the lack of protection for renters. They're not asking for the world. I feel like if there's an imbalance there. That needs to be remedied. One of the bills required landlords to disclose certain defects to potential tenants. Salt Lake City renters do have a new resource when they run into housing issues and scams. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston has that part of the story. Peter? Resource is a website for Salt Lake City renters to make complaints. It's called the Consumer Protection Portal, and it's a hub for solving problems ranging from wrongful evictions to the heat going out, according to the Salt Lake Tribune. Now, the bigger purpose here is about searching out what the website calls unethical business practices, and Salt Lake City plans to respond to complaints within five business days. This isn't the place to go if you see a dangerous situation on a piece of public property. That's the time to call 911. But we'll have a link to this and other renter resources on kslnewsradio.com. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. A new type of apartment block is going up in downtown Salt Lake with rooms designed to combat loneliness. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit joins us live. Michael? Amanda, a lot of up-and-coming renters struggle with loneliness in the aftermath of the pandemic. Now, to this end, Salt Lake Crossing took a page out of the shared living spaces you'd see in college dorms. In essence, you have a private suite built around communal spaces like kitchens or living areas. The crossing also comes with luxury amenities and is located conveniently close to Front Runner and the Delta Center. And this is all to help foster connection among residents. And it looks like they found a market. Many young people are already pre-leasing. Doors will probably be opening later in April. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. North Ogden police are asking everyone to keep an eye out after a reported attempted kidnapping of a nine year old. The girl tells police a man in a white SUV stopped in the neighborhood and asked her to get in to get some ice cream. She instead took off. Police say they are taking the report seriously and it's a good idea to talk with kids about stranger danger. KSL's top national stories this hour. The special counsel who investigated President Biden's handling of classified documents testifies today before the House Judiciary Committee. The hearing marks the first time the special counsel will publicly discuss what he submitted in his report to the attorney general last month. Robert Hur recommended that no criminal charges be brought in the handling of classified material, in large part because he felt a jury would see Joe Biden as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Democrats are sure to press her on why he said all that. ABC Stephen Portnoy says Democrats accuse her of violating Justice Department norms when mentioning the president's health in his report. 
First look traffic now, and here is Andy Farnsworth. Amanda, we start off with traffic in pretty good shape this morning. Road conditions uh, not affected by any weather so far, and we do have one crash reported. It's in Spanish Fort Canyon about a mile east uh, before you get to the Highway 89 turnoff to go to San Pete County. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Salt Lake Airport officials are trying to find a permanent fix after groundwater started leaking into the Salt Lake Airport tunnel yesterday. That already maddening trek between gates A and B got flooded Monday afternoon when airport officials say a water leak forced the detour of airline passengers and personnel. The utility corridor opened up as an alternate as workers mopped up the mess. It's pretty surprising to see that much water just coming out of the ground in the tunnel there. Passenger Kevin Monroe telling KSL 5 he was worried that he might miss his flight, but that he worked his way along with the other passengers the back way and made it on time. Airport spokesperson Nancy Vollmer says they initiated a bus bridge to transport passengers who require special assistance. A temporary fix stopped the water leak. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. Cars made by General Motors with OnStar may be sharing data about your driving habits. ABC Derek Dennis has more. Nationwide auto insurance rates are up 26% this year, rising six times faster than overall inflation. The increase is blamed on several factors, including the rising cost of car repairs. But now you can add another factor, the possibility of insurance companies tracking how you drive. GM confirmed to the New York Times the company shares insights with LexisNexis and other data brokers, but only if customers opt in to the program. Sandy police say they've been stopping speeders going as fast as 67 miles an hour on streets in front of a school. KSL TV's Andrew Adams is following that story. Afternoon traffic past Alta High School is always a little chaotic. Recently, Sandy police say the zooming has gotten a little out of control. I know that there were three tickets that were written, one at 58, uh, I believe one at 67, and another one at 65. Two of the tickets were handed to high schoolers. One crossing guard says the near misses have gotten really concerning and police are trying to crack down on the problem. Looks like we have a smooth commute in this early hour. No delays on I-15. We'll check traffic and weather together coming up next. Join your friends who rely on KSL each morning for the fastest routes to work and school. Uh, I like traffic on the nines. So I need to get the kids up earlier so that my son isn't driving quickly in a snowstorm. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines on KSL News Radio. Advanced window products. $2,500 off 10 windows or more. AdvancedWindows.com. Affordable windows. Guaranteed. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Prevent your child's next asthma attack. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. You're the one they take on road trips. The one they show their favorite song to. The one they call asking for advice. You know their favorite snack. Their safe spaces. And the phrase they don't realize they say. You're the one who knows what makes them smile and what doesn't. And because you know them so well, you'll know when their thoughts are darker than normal. So, if you notice they're having thoughts of suicide, ask to hold on to their gun, if only for a few days. It could save their life. Learn more at liveonutah.org. If you're just joining us this morning, we have a terrific snowpack news, and we've got more snow on the way. Adam Small is following that for us this morning. 509 now, traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. How's it looking, Andy? Uh, right now, Amanda, it's a nice start for things going through Salt Lake County, I-15 uh, from Draper to downtown, less than 20 minutes this morning. And we've got good conditions coming south through Davis County as well, at least on the freeway thus far. Uh, traffic out of Tooele County on I-80 gets a little bit uh, uh, heavy near the airport, but uh, city streets, no crashes as of yet. Eric? In Utah County, I-15 is cruising right along northbound from Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain. That's a 24-minute drive if you're in Spanish Fork and you're heading out on Highway 6 into Spanish Fork Canyon. About a mile past uh, uh, US-89, uh, about a mile into the uh, canyon, basically. You've got a crash there, and uh, it looks pretty windy out there, so uh, you know, be careful uh, in addition to the weather with the vehicles that are not moving. 
Call 801-288-ZERO and get Celebrate Utah's Cleaning Week. One room clean starting at just $25 with a four room minimum and 25% off all other services. Use promo code CLEANWEEK, zero res. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today with a high of 49. Overnight will drop off to 33. Tomorrow, 42. Rain, snow, showers possible. Then some east winds on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Yep, you'll need to bundle up today for sure. Right now it's cloudy and 44 degrees. It's called the Worldwide Threats Hearing. This is when the uh, heads of the six intelligence agencies come before Congress, both the Senate and House, to testify about what threats the United States faces. We're going to find out what they had to say with uh, law enforcement reporter Luke Barr coming up in just a moment here on KSL. You can stream us, of course, at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. Listen to us live. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owed the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take your house, put a lien on your bank account, uh, garnish your pay. They don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they helped me. They calmed me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go it alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Dave and Debbie. I want our listeners to feel like they have an advocate, that they have somebody that's going to fight for them, challenge the status quo or the pithy soundbite. We have a unique job where we have access to interviews and people that not everyone has. We take that seriously. So if we do feel like we're getting a spin, then we can challenge it. I love it when people tell me, I was just thinking about that question that you asked. I'm glad you asked that question. That's like the height of compliment. I want our listeners to feel empowered to use the information that they've learned on the David Dijanovic show to help their families to help make good decisions, help investigate other avenues to maybe protect their family's safety or protect their family's money. I'm hopeful our show leaves our listeners with a sense of empowerment so they can make the best decision possible for themselves and for their families. Listen for Dave and Dejanovic 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. Hi, Grandma. What's for dinner? Hey, honey, I'm making stew tonight. Ooh, can Nina come over? I'm not sure about our new friend. I wonder if there's been any drinking going on. Alcohol at her age can lead to so many bad things. I've been meaning to ask you, what would happen if someone offered you a drink? Grandma! This is hard. She's so young. But I know I need to talk to her about it now before someone tries to give her alcohol. If anyone ever does offer you a drink, I want you to say no. I have too much respect for my family and I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. Really? I promise, Grandma. I love you too. Okay, how about tasting this stew and telling me what you think? Mm. Some children may try alcohol as young as nine years old. It's not too early to talk about drinking. For tips on how to begin the conversation, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. That's underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. This message brought to you by SAMHSA and this station. KSL News Time is 514. The three things you need to know this hour. First, we've already hit the average for water in this year's snowpack, and more snow is on its way. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, North Ogden police are asking everyone to keep an eye out after a reported attempted kidnapping of a nine year old. Third, traffic and weather together. Got a look at a crash on Highway 6 about a mile into uh, Spanish Fort Canyon. It looks like it might be affecting both directions. Uh, haven't seen any traffic getting through there as of yet, at least not in the camera shot that we have. Rest of the commute moving just fine at the moment. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today, high of 49. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 45 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios and time for KSL's top national stories. From ABC News. 
I'm Sherry Preston. Is TikTok a threat to national security? There is a briefing scheduled for today in Congress as House Republicans move forward with a bill to ban the social media app so long as it's owned by the Chinese company ByteDance. Members of Congress are preparing to receive a classified briefing from U.S. intelligence agencies on the security threat posed by TikTok. It comes ahead of a House vote tomorrow on a bill that would require TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell its U.S. operations to an American company or be banned from the U.S. The bill is expected to pass the House with bipartisan support. Its future in the Senate remains unclear. That's ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. TikTok has been encouraging creators and small business owners who use the platform to reach out to members of Congress, asking them not to vote for the bill. Three young children and two adults killed in a fiery crash in western Illinois on Monday. Here's ABC's Alex Preche. A horrific crash scene after a semi-truck collided with a school bus, killing five people, including all three preschool-aged children on board. It happened about 60 miles west of Springfield. The bus crossed the line into oncoming traffic and then into the path of that truck hauling sand. Both drivers were also killed. The New York Times is reporting that Boeing failed 33 of the 89 audits the FAA conducted following the blowout of a door panel on a Boeing plane mid-flight back in January. At a series of emergency meetings by a group of Caribbean nations called CARICOM, Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry has agreed to step down. ABC's Matt Rivers. What became clear after the last couple of weeks is that Haiti had spiraled out of control and something needed to change, and the public pressure mounted that Henry needed to resign. And that is what happened. So in a late Monday evening press conference, the current chair of CARICOM comes out, thanks Henry for his service, and says he has submitted his resignation. That's ABC's Matt Rivers. You're listening to... ABC News. Let's go in depth on the annual worldwide threats hearing that focused at least in part on AI. ABC News law enforcement reporter Luke Barr joins me live. Well, what did they learn about the threat of AI there, Luke? Yeah, good morning and thanks for having me. So the main takeaway from AI is that it could be used uh, as a malign influence operation in the 2024 election. Uh, the director of national intelligence warned uh, that when 60 countries go to vote in, uh, in this year's uh, elections, uh, from the United States to uh, other countries abroad, uh, they're concerned about the use of AI by foreign adversaries uh, to manipulate information uh, that could be used uh, when voting uh, in the election. In the actual voting process, or are you talking about social media information? So, yeah, social media information and, and, and other information. That, you know, they gave the example uh, that, uh, you know, when the, the CIA director said that they're seeing, uh, you know, a, a, an Al-Qaeda video uh, that used AI uh, to to encourage lone wolf operations. Uh, you know, the director of uh, national intelligence, a a Avril Haines, said that they've seen um, you know, a, an AI video of, of President Zelensky uh, calling for us um, you know, to lay down their arms in 2022. Obviously, that's not true, uh, and that didn't happen. Uh, but these are the types of, of, of landmines that uh, could be out there when dealing with uh, AI. So in this hearing, was it all about the laying out the problems, or were any potential solutions offered? Yeah, so it was all about uh, basically saying uh, you know, that, that these threats from the southern border they mentioned uh, to AI, as we talked about, to the need for a ceasefire in Gaza, to funding for Ukraine, they kind of laid out all of those issues um, and, and what, what the, the threats facing the nation are. But they were, they were scarce on what they're doing about it. They're tracking a lot of these things. Uh, but, you know, they didn't really say uh, uh, how they're combating it. And, of course, a lot of it is, is, is classified. And, and, and there's a two parts to this hearing. There's the public setting and then there's the classified setting, uh, which, you know, provides a lot more answers about what's actually going on, what they're doing about a lot of these issues. How did they describe the need for a ceasefire as a matter of our national security? And, and the CIA director said that, because of the uh, national security implications that we face, uh, the need for a ceasefire, uh, he called for a six-week ceasefire uh, to release some of the hostages that are uh, being held by uh, Hamas. So uh, he said that for our national security uh, and, and, and the national security of, of you know, more so the world, we, we need a, a ceasefire. What were, what were the most pointed questions about? Were they about AI or something else? 
and they were about the southern border. And so mm. a lot of the a lot of the uh, senators asked about the threat that the southern border uh, you know, possesses. Uh, of you know when when you've got all these migrants crossing the border most illegally, and you know the the the, the one takeaway uh, that the FBI director said is that he's very concerned that uh, somebody might use the southern border, uh, you know, to carry out an attack. Uh, he said that there have been quote dangerous individuals entering the United States um, through the southern border. Uh, that he's seen uh, it's something that he's concerned about, uh, and it's something that he could you know that could potentially be be dangerous for the U.S. going forward. Mm. We'll follow it with your help, Luke. Thank you, uh, ABC News law enforcement reporter Luke Barr, with us on the in depth at fifteen and forty five. Let's get another look at traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to twenty cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, we start off with traffic rolling on I-15 from Draper to downtown. Less than 20-minute travel time. It's been pretty quiet as well between Ogden and Salt Lake on I-15. If you're planning on going into Weber Canyon, you're just fine all the way up to Mountain Green. Big and Little Cottonwood Canyons are both open and without restriction. Eric? Going into Parley's Canyon uh, looks good uh, this morning. Uh, for the most part, you do have some uh, upward uh, mobility problems for some of the drivers uh, struggling to get up the hill to Parley Summit. Uh, that's on the eastbound side at the moment. Uh, but on the westbound side, doesn't look too bad. Down to Utah County, I-15 looks good. A mile into Spanish Fork Canyon, you've got to crash on Highway 6 if you're heading down towards Price. Uh, be aware that you've got uh, vehicles, and it's, uh, vehicles uh, that are not moving and uh, emergency vehicles on hand and it's very windy as well. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 8 forecast has the inclement weather in the first half of the week. We'll go 49 today with a chance for showers through the evening hours. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers. And then we get some east winds on Thursday, partly cloudy, 50 degrees. Could see the winds linger into Friday, 53 the high. High pressure takes over Saturday, 55. Sunday, 58. Hey, we're back to 61 on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now we've got clouds and 44 degrees, and the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Well, Damian Lillard's alma mater struggled in the Big Sky Conference. What was the final score? Let me see. Ah, Montana State 91, Weber State 82. Doggone it. We do have more uh, conference tournament play for you coming up tomorrow. It's tomorrow morning. BYU uh, will be tipping off at 1030 tomorrow morning. And the pregame starts at 9 o'clock. Mitch and Matt will be here for extended pregame coverage tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And that is sponsored by Ryan Valuation, formerly Economic Partners. with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I'm Dave Cauley investigative journalist and host of the podcast, Cold. In October of 1985, a woman named Cherie Warren left work at a busy Salt Lake City office. To meet her estranged husband at a downtown auto dealership. She never made it home. 
Cherie's car surfaced weeks later in Las Vegas. In the parking lot of a hotel casino. No one knows how it got there. Strange. It was strange. Both Cherie's estranged husband and her boyfriend raised suspicion for investigators. I kind of thought that he might have done something. But no arrests were ever made. In Cold Season 3, we dig into double lives, make new connections in the case, and examine the difficulty raised by reasonable doubt. We want answers just as much as anyone else. They have creeps like that now too, so nothing's changed. That's the new Cold Season 3, The Search for Cherie. Now available anywhere you get your podcasts. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Johnsonville is recalling over 35,000 pounds of kielbasa sausage for possible rubber pieces in the casing. No injuries have been reported so far. Airbnb is banning the use of indoor security cameras regardless of their location. They were previously allowed in common areas like hallways and living rooms if it was disclosed on the listings page. To simplify the policy and protect privacy, none will be allowed inside. Buffalo Wild Wings is celebrating March Madness by offering buy one, get one wing orders and a chance to beat a real-life buffalo in a bracket. The company is hosting Beat the Buffalo, where a real buffalo <laughs> will fill out a bracket. No idea how that will happen. And fans will compete against the buffalo. That's funny. All right, where did we close yesterday on the markets? Let's take a look here. The Dow closed up 46 points at 38,000. 769. The S&P and the NASDAQ both closed down. Let's see where the futures are this morning. The Dow is off just a fraction this morning. Futures are off 11. The S&P futures are up 10.5, which is two tenths percent. The NASDAQ futures this morning up 69, which is four tenths percent. And crude oil is up 24 cents to $78.17 a barrel. We do have one crash into Spanish Fork Canyon, but no crashes anywhere else to report right now. Looks good out there this early. Traffic and weather together coming up. Up next. I like daffodils, tulips, the big dinner plate dahlias. I loved being in the garden, but I wasn't going to be able to because I couldn't not only walk, but I couldn't really stand on my foot without being in pain. It was excruciating. So my husband said, let's go to the Good Feet store. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Terry live the life they love without letting their feet get in the way. This nice young man said, I think I can help you. He got the arch support, and I was fitted. And I kept walking back and forth across the store, and I looked at my husband and burst into tears because it was the first time in a year that I have not had any pain in my foot. I have had no pain since the day I bought him. Now I can do whatever I want. There isn't any place on my property that doesn't have flowers blooming 365 days a year. I still can't believe it. My name is Terry, and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet Store. Stop by the Good Feet Store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1 800 New Feet or visit goodfeet.com. Tim and Amanda. I don't want to be in the dark about things. I'm sure you don't either, Tim. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to know. What's going on with the weather? Are my kids safe? You know, where is my money going? I want to be informed. Yeah, the truth is, it's important information for you and your families to make sure that you are informed so that if some changes are necessary in your life or your children's life, you can make them by listening and starting your morning with us here on KSL. Wake up with Utah's morning news with Tim and Amanda, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. Are you using the KSL News Radio app to listen to your favorite shows whenever you want? Whenever you want, you can podcast Utah's Morning News even after it's finished at nine. You can listen to David Nijanovic or Boyd Matheson. Just click on the podcast tab. Podcast tab, and you can stream Jeff Kaplan live between three and seven right from the player. All of those shows, plus the KSL Greenhouse and Cougar Sports Saturday, they're on the app for KSL News Radio. KSL News Radio. Good morning. KSL News Time is 529. Let's get a look at traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Andy? Starting to see some heavy traffic on Bangor Highway near the 21st South Freeway. Most of the traffic out of Tooele County this morning, both on I-80 and splitting onto 201, has been pretty light uh, thus far. Coming south from Ogden to downtown, still only a 30-minute commute on the freeway and no extra slowing yet between Draper and Salt Lake City. Eric? Over on the 215 East Belt, uh, no problems 
Mountains heading north up to the mouth of Parley's Canyon, going into the canyon. Still have some eastbound slowing uh, going up the hill to uh, Parley Summit and a little bit uh, coming off the top of the hill and going through Jeremy Ranch just a little. I-15, Utah County, no problems there, but one crash in Spanish Fork Canyon if you're on Highway 6, about a mile past the mouth of the canyon. Uh, we've got uh, vehicles over to the side of the road and emergency vehicles on hand too. Lagoon is looking for ride maintenance technicians. Lagoon offers excellent mechanical training programs with amazing career opportunities. Ride maintenance technician position is full-time and year-round. Details, visit lagoonpark.com forward slash jobs. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Let's get a look at this forecast. We've got rain in the forecast for today. The high will be 49 degrees. That's rain in many parts of the state. And then the temperature's dropping. We'll get some rain mixed with snow overnight and into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's high should be 42 degrees. We start to warm back up from there. 51 on Thursday, it clears out, and we'll have lots of sun uh, Friday and through the weekend. So next Monday, 61 degrees. Yep, it's spring for sure. Right now it's cloudy and 44 downtown. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. On KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 5.30. Tim has the day off. KSL's top story this hour tonight is the first public meeting about potential changes to the Alpine School District. Some of the suggestions would split the district in half. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage, the future of Utah schools. Adam? Amanda, Florida-based MGT Consulting has studied possible ways to accommodate all the new students that continue to move into the already the state's largest school district. They've come up with six options. Some involve splitting Alpine into two, potentially three school districts. Tonight is the first chance for people to comment on the six proposals on the table. The meeting will begin at 7 o'clock in the Timpanogos High School Auditorium. The next meeting will be tomorrow night at 7 at Vista Heights Middle School, followed by the last meeting on Thursday at American Fork Junior High. Now, several steps are required to create a new school district, including public hearings and elections. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr has those details. The process of creating a new school district can begin in one of three ways, either with a citizen's initiative petition at the request of a local school board or through a request from a city within the boundaries of the school district. The petitions and requests then have to go through county clerks, an advisory board, feasibility studies, public meetings, county elections, and receive the lieutenant governor's approval before a school district can be created. Alpine School District is currently looking at options of expanding and they will be hearing public comments starting tonight and lasting through Thursday. Alessandra Gurr, KSL News Radio. Adam, aren't there other school districts that are also dealing with a lot of growth? Yeah, Amanda, there are actually several growth hotspots and KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera is actually taking a closer look at that for us. Even though Utah County holds the top spot in population growth, Nate Curry with the Wasatch Front Regional Council points out Salt Lake and Davis counties are their own hotspots for development. Southwest Salt Lake County, that's definitely experiencing a ton of growth. But also there's, you know, like the infill growth that's occurring. Uh, and, and you look at places like, you know, downtown Salt Lake City with all of the new housing that's being built there or around Farmington Station, for example. Curry said with different types of growth occurring, that gives Utahns choices of where they want to live and choose the lifestyle that suits their situation. But as our landscape evolves, let's hope our strategy for schools can keep up. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. The Biden campaign rushed to post a campaign ad last night condemning former President Trump's comments on Social Security. CNBC asking former President Trump if he's changed his earlier comments about protecting Social Security or Medicaid. First of all, there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting. The Biden campaign immediately firing back with a quote from his State of the Union address. If anyone here tries to cut Social Security or Medicare or raise the retirement age, I will stop you. No word whether Mr. Trump would go through with those cuts. Andy Field, ABC News. Congress is taking more steps to get the TikTok app away from Chinese control. ABC's M. Wynn reports from Washington. Members of Congress are preparing to receive a classified briefing from U.S. intelligence agencies on the security threat posed by TikTok. Created. It comes ahead Alpine of a School House District vote on a bill that would require off. TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell its U.S. operations to an American company or be banned from the U.S. The bill is expected to pass the House with bipartisan support. Its future in the Senate remains unclear. The vote will likely happen tomorrow morning.
The Utah DWR is trying to track down the people who left a group of deer to waste. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Amanda, um, there were these were illegal kills, and whoever was the hunters took the bucks' heads and left the bodies. Wildlife resources tell KSL TV the deer were shot with rifles between October and November last year, around the time of a muzzleloader hunt event. One of them happened near Woodland Hills near Payson, but we don't yet have info on where the other bodies were found. These are strange cases, but they're only a drop in the bucket of total illegal wildlife kills every year. In 2023, more than 1,000 wild animals were illegally hunted, worth over $600,000. To share a tip about this event, call the number listed on kslnewsradio.com. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. First look traffic now, and here is Andy Farnsworth. Right now, if you're on I-15, traffic is still clear into and out of Salt Lake City in both directions. We've got a little bit of Redwood traffic building up in volume in uh, Taylorsville near 215. And we've still got a crash a uh, little bit to inside the mouth of Spanish Fort Canyon, right where Highway 89 joins up right as you go into uh, Spanish Fort Canyon. Uh, although it does look like not as many emergency vehicles as we had earlier. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. More people are questioning the safety of the Mountain View Corridor after two fatal crashes at the same intersection in less than a month. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson has more. Three people died Friday night at the intersection of the Mountain View Corridor and 3500 South, and two people died on February 21st at the same intersection. In both cases, initial reports show the drivers ran a red light. Anytime there's a serious or fatal crash, we're going to take a very close look to see if there's anything that we can do from an engineering standpoint to to improve safety. But at the same time, we need people to follow the rules of the road. John Gleason, a spokesman for UDOT, says in recent years they've added more time between phases, so the lights pause a little longer before turning green. They've also added more advanced red light warning signals along Mountain View Corridor. Heather Peterson, KSL News Radio. Haiti's prime minister has resigned following a series of unified gang attacks that took over government buildings and the airport. ABC's Matt Rivers says the gang leaders got what they wanted. Henri, for a while, did not resign, and it led to a lot of speculation that he wasn't going to resign. People were watching what was going on. International pressure was building. Clearly the demand from the gangs was that Henri needed to resign, and yet he held out until last night when it was announced that Henri had finally decided to resign. Haiti's prime minister has been in office since 2021, since the assassination of the previous prime minister. 30 million Americans are facing prescription shortages, and Utah is one of the states struggling the most. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit has more. Michael? Amanda, our state comes second on the list with the highest medication shortage in the nation, with nearly 400,000 Utahns unable to fill their prescription with a particular shortage for meds treating asthma, ADHD, and shingles. And and prescriptions aren't the only ones. Pharmacies across the nation are also struggling to keep the shelves stocked. Now, the FDA is taking some steps here, including working with international companies to divert products to the U.S. and speeding up the process for authorizing new production facilities. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. It's looking pretty quiet out there on the UDOT traffic cameras, but we'll check it. Traffic and weather together coming up next. Spend time with KSL News Radio and get a deeper understanding of the world around us. I do listen to KSL so much because you've got voices like Boyd Matheson. Well, I listen to him every day. You can trust him. Inside Sources, weekdays 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. When you choose Performance Automotive in Bountiful, you're choosing selection, convenience, and exceptional service. Four locations Performance Ford Lincoln, Performance Honda, Performance Toyota, and Ford Truck Country. All dedicated to delivering you the best auto experience anywhere. Looking for your first car? Maybe you want rugged power or the stylish ride of your dreams. New or used? See it all at PerformanceBountiful.com. PerformanceBountiful.com. IVC, Interventional Vascular and Vein Center, is having a Hello Spring special event on Saturday, March 23rd. This will be a free screening for varicose veins at their office in Provo. Don't let leg pain slow you down. Come and learn why starting now is ideal to get you ready for summer. IVC has been in business for over 20 years and has been voted the best vein center of Utah Valley for 10 years running. IVC's doctors, advanced practice providers, and sonographers will be on hand to answer your questions. So stop in to IVC on Saturday, March 23rd for a free varicose vein screening. Space is limited, so please RSVP right now. Let's spring new life into your step. 
Visit iVein.com. iVein.com. That's the letter I, V E I N.com to schedule your new year, new legs free screening at IVC. Because life starts when the pain stops. Tonight is the first public meeting about the potential changes to the Alpine School District, but there are meetings also tomorrow and Thursday. We're covering the future of Utah schools this morning on KSL. 539 now, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Back to you, Andy. Amanda, travel through Salt Lake County, still pretty quiet on the freeways, I-15, 215, and the 201 freeway, not seeing any slow spots. Redwood's a bit busy, though, for traffic heading from West Jordan up to Taylorsville towards I-215's on-ramp. In Davis County, the freeway clear still from uh, 12th Street in Ogden all the way to downtown Salt Lake, but starting to see some heavy traffic on city streets in Ogden, including 30th Street, a little bit east of uh, Wall Avenue, and then uh, on on Washington Boulevard itself, a bit heavy between 36th Street and 30th Street. Eric? Along the Wasatch Bank, a little bit of struggles for uh, folks trying to get up the hill to Jordan Hill Reservoir if you're northbound on US-40 coming out of Heber City, but that's the only problem. I-80 now, if there's some earlier delays going up over the top of Parley Summit, uh, that's all better. Down in uh, Utah County, I-15 is uh, still pretty good. Uh, Normal travel times northbound from Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain, 24 minutes. But going into Spanish Fork Canyon, you got to crash about a mile into the canyon. And we do see some slowdowns uh, going by that particular event. Call 801-288-ZERO and get Celebrate Utah's Cleaning Week. One room clean starting at just $25 with a four room minimum and 25% off all other services. Use promo code CLEANWEEK. Zero res. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Slightly below normal in the temperature department today. High of 49 with a chance for showers through the day. Overnight dipping off to 33. Chance for showers overnight. 42 tomorrow. Rain snow showers. Then it's 50. Partly cloudy and windy on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now it's cloudy and 44 degrees. We've been talking about Congress's potential move to ban TikTok if ownership doesn't separate itself from the Chinese government. And I started wondering, what would happen to all that time suddenly? Our kids, what would they do with those hours that they have been spending on TikTok? Would they just go over to Instagram or Be Real or something else? Or could something else come out of that regained time. Just an interesting uh, thought. We'll be talking more about the ban and how they're debating it in Congress with Mike Dubusky, who is our tech expert. That's just ahead on KSL, streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. Two years ago, Americans watched in horror as a crisis unfolded at the Kabul airport. She was tear gassed and beaten. Images of thousands desperate to escape Taliban oppression filled our news feeds. More than 80,000 Afghans made it to America. But the story didn't end there. It was very cold. There was no power, no heat. Who would help our newest neighbors? I'm Andrea Smartin. In Stranger Becomes Neighbor, you'll hear the stories of some remarkable refugees who left their homes and their dreams behind only to start over from zero. Their only possession was three blankets. And you'll meet Americans who stepped up to help them. You want me to come when you deliver your baby. What can one person do 
in the face of an international disaster decades in the making. That's Stranger Becomes Neighbor. Find us at kslpodcast.com, follow us on Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. KSL News Time is 544. The three things you need to know this hour first. Salt Lake City renters can now make complaints about housing issues and scams online. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second tonight is the first public meeting about potential changes to the Alpine School District, which could lead to a district split. Third, traffic and weather together. And right now, I-15 traffic is Draper to downtown, still only a 20-minute commute. Uh, the only crash we've really got affecting traffic is going into Spanish Fort Canyon. And actually, it looks like it's more of a delay coming out of the canyon. If you're going into the canyon, it's a little slow, but you're still getting by. I'm Andy Farnsworth at the KSL Traffic Center. Wet weather back in the forecast and even some wind. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 44 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for KSL's top national story. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. Special Counsel Robert Herr, who investigated Joe Biden's handling of classified documents, appears before the House Judiciary Committee today. ABC Chief White House Correspondent Mary Bruce is in the hearing room this morning. The president and the White House furious over Herr's characterization of Biden as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. The White House has said that was gratuitous and inappropriate and overshadowed the fact that, unlike Donald Trump, President Biden did not obstruct this investigation and was exonerated. But some of Donald Trump's closest allies in Congress actually sit on this committee. They are now demanding the full transcript of Biden's interview with the special counsel. Also on Capitol Hill today, a classified briefing from U.S. intelligence agencies on the security threat posed by the Chinese-owned TikTok. Lawmakers threatened to ban the app unless the owners divest. Three preschool-aged children, the driver of a school bus and the driver of a semi filled with sand, all killed in a fiery crash yesterday in western Illinois. This is ABC News. She just mentioned about to the discussion in Washington about the potential of banning TikTok. The future of TikTok is in limbo as both sides argue their case. Joining me now live is ABC News technology reporter Mike Dubusky. This isn't the first time they've talked about a TikTok ban, is it, Mike? Not by any stretch of the imagination. It feels like we've been talking about a TikTok ban for years, and that's in large part because we have been. Um, back in 2020, uh, former President Trump tried to ban TikTok via executive order, but that was pretty immediately tied up in the courts and never really went anywhere. There have been a, a number of efforts since then to do the same thing, but now we're seeing an effort to ban this very popular social media app come from the House of Representatives, a, a piece of legislation introduced last week by partisan legislation uh, from Republican Mike Gallagher and Democrat Raja Krishnamurthy. The bill that would give ByteDance, which is TikTok, parent company, 180 days to sell off TikTok, presumably to an American firm of some kind. And the concern here is similar to what we've been talking about uh, when we talk about TikTok bans, that the Chinese government could potentially force ByteDance to share American user data with the Chinese government or uh, this sort of emerging concern that the app could be used for propaganda purposes. We know that it's very popular, especially among young people. Chinese government could potentially use that to leverage pro-China messaging and get it before uh, you know eyeballs that would not otherwise see it. Worth mentioning here, though, guys, there's no evidence, there's no smoking gun uh, here to say that this is actually happening. Lawmakers are clearly concerned that it could happen, and you can imagine that's the lingering concern ahead of the 2024 election. If this became law then, and let's say that the Chinese government does not divest itself in six months, would it would the app disappear off my phone or what would happen? It, so it's an interesting question, right? The way that this legislation uh, seeks to ban TikTok is not necessarily to stop its distribution. It's to target app stores, right? So this is legislation that goes after the Google Play Store, which is how Android users download apps onto their phones. And Apple's App Store, which is the same thing for iPhone users, those two uh, platforms would no longer be allowed to host TikTok. And there's ways for TikTok to get around that. You can uh, sideload apps, uh, uh, but it's very complicated. And the average user, uh, you know, it, it, it's assumed would not really want to go through that amount of trouble for TikTok. So it would be, you know, in quotes, an effective ban as opposed to an outright ban. Um, you can imagine losing the two sort of main marketplaces for apps, uh, you know, in the American smartphone market would be pretty damaging to their business in this country. You mentioned, Mike, that President Trump signed an executive order to ban TikTok in 2020. But didn't he come out yesterday and say something positive about TikTok? He did. Uh, TikTok has gained a pretty unlikely ally here in former President Trump. 
Um, he on Truth Social said that TikTok would uh, a ban on TikTok rather would double the business of Facebook, uh, which he called the the enemy of the people. Um, which is an interesting change of tone from the former president. Uh, we were not expecting this, uh, and as you mentioned, you know he was kind of the one who kicked this idea off back in 2020. Um, so it, it's an interesting reversal. Um, the current president, President Biden says he would sign a, a TikTok ban if it ever reaches his desk. But uh, this House bill, which could be voted on uh, really as soon as tomorrow, does face a pretty uncertain path forward. There's no corresponding legislation in the Senate. There's no really schedule for that to be uh, taken up. So uh, there's potential that this could be voted on in the House and passed, and then it kind of just goes by the wayside for a little bit. We don't know uh, whether a full TikTok ban would uh, really see uh, you know, passage in the Senate or to be signed by President Biden before the, the 2024 election, or mm-hmm. yeah, the, the election later this year. We'll follow it with your help, Mike. Thank you. ABC News technology reporter Mike Dubusky with me on the in-depth at 15 and 45. 549, traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, travel through Salt Lake County still clear on I-15. Redwood's looking a little bit more uh, uh, lighter, a little bit lighter traffic now in the Taylorsville area going to get on 215. SR-201, a bit heavy around 7200 West. The Davis County and Weber County Drive on I-15 and Highway 89, both delay-free so far. Even the gates to Hill Air Force Base, the Westgate and Roy Gates are a little bit more busy than the Southgate right now. Eric? Cleanup of a crash continues out on Highway 6 if you're going into Spanish Fork Canyon. About a mile into the canyon, that's where this crash has taken place. Uh, if uh, Elsewhere, though, in Utah County, no problems on I-15. Uh, dif- no difficulties from San Quentin Basin all the way up to Lehigh End Point of the Mountain. And if you're going into the mountains uh, uh, via other canyons, uh, I-80 looks good through Parley's Canyon, 189 through Provo Canyon, all in good shape. Now's the time for a gorgeous new Nilsson home. Beautiful move and ready townhomes to Rambler communities. Maintenance free for all life stages. See what's new for you at NilssonHomes.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast. We've got some wet weather back in the seven day. 49 today with a chance for showers. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers. Then it's partly cloudy Thursday with a high of 50, but east winds possible not only Thursday, but potentially into Friday with a high of 53 there. Saturday, 55, high pressure building. Sunday, 58, sunny skies, mostly sunny, and 61 by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Looks like that rain is moving in. We've got showers in the vicinity here and 45 degrees. And the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. We are going in-depth on the future of Utah schools today, focusing especially on the Alpine School District. Their public meetings begin tonight on the six different possibilities for the future of the district, including splitting in two or maybe in three. Tomorrow morning, join us at this time tomorrow morning because... We're going to be talking about the details on how vouchers and school choice may be affecting district population projections and what that means for your taxpayer dollars. That's interesting. That'll be tomorrow morning here as we continue to focus on the future of Utah schools. Up next, we'll get a look at Bunny News on KSL News Radio. Want more speed? Well, you're in luck because Xfinity just increased their internet speeds and they're faster than ever. Plus, with super fast internet and a reliable connection, you can do more of what you love whenever you want. More gaming, more downloading, more video chatting, and more cozy nights on the couch streaming your favorite movies and TV shows. If life with more speed sounds pretty awesome, that's because it is. It's time to get more out of your internet with faster speeds from Xfinity. Get 300 megabit Xfinity. Infinity Internet for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract and Wi-Fi equipment included. That's 50% more speed for the same great price. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and other charges extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Actual speeds vary and not guaranteed. Want more speed? Go to Xfinity.com, call, or visit a store today. My name is Tom. My name is Cindy. We give to and volunteer with United Way at our community free health clinic. We know our time and money are going to the right places. We don't just wear the shirt. We live it. Give. Ed- Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. You trust us for news and information in your car. 
Now trust us at home. KSL News Radio has you covered, keeping you informed on the latest breaking news, weather, traffic, sports, and more. Listen on your Amazon Echo or Google Home device. Just say, Alexa, open KSL News Radio, or listen on the KSL News Radio Listen app. Text the word app to 57500. KSL News Radio, we have you covered. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Tyson Foods is closing a pork plant in Iowa, laying off 1,200 workers. Pork sales dropped $70 million in the last year. It's the latest closure from the manufacturer. Tyson closed six chicken plants in the past year. Lego is making more money than ever. The toy company's sales grew 2% last year, despite the global toy industry sales slipping 7%. Many toy companies are struggling to get their groove back post-pandemic, but not Lego. They were one of the few that saw massive growth during the lockdown. KSL Drives Forward will... Uh, spend $365 million to resolve allegations that the company violated federal tax laws by misclassifying and understating the value of imported cars. The Justice Department says Ford used these tactics from 20, uh, 2009 to 2013 on cargo vans from Turkey. Your money at this moment, the Dow futures are off just seven, just a fraction. S&P is up at 12, that's about a quarter percent. The Nasdaq futures up 85, which is a half percent. <laughs> Cooper Tracks is sponsored by Central Bank CB Vault, Utah's help center for startups and entrepreneurs. Visit cbutah.com. And here is BYU insider Mitch Harper. BYU basketball arrived in Kansas City last night as they get set for their first appearance in the Big 12 Conference Tournament. The Cougars will tip off their run in KC tomorrow morning against Oklahoma State or UCF. Former BYU star Jake Toulson, who four years ago today saw his senior season cut short through the COVID-19 pandemic, you can't help but get excited for this team. I can't lie. I sit here and watch this year's team and see how well they play together and wish we could have ran some more of that action, those zooms, mm. those away screens, those pin downs, the dribble handoffs with playing with Ali and finding all the late cutters and wide open threes. Like, in my opinion, that's the greatest way to play basketball. BYU's second round game in the Big 12 tournament tips off tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. with extended pregame starting at 9 right here on KSL. With Cougar Tracks from Kansas City, I'm Mitch Harper on your legacy home of the BYU Cougars, KSL News Radio. Are you a startup, entrepreneur, or business owner looking for funding? Look no further than Central Bank's CB Vault, Utah's help center for startups and entrepreneurs. CB Vault understands the unique challenges faced by business owners. CB Vault is here to help you start, grow, or thrive with a dedicated help center for startups and entrepreneurs, providing personalized financial solutions, networking, and guidance for every step of the way. With a range of services tailored for startups and small businesses and expert financial advice to flexible loan options, CB Vault helps you get funding and allows you to keep your equity. Whether you're seeking funding, planning expansion, or navigating the financial landscape, CB Vault's team of experts is ready to assist you in turning your vision into reality. Don't let financial barriers hold you back. Central Bank's CB Vault is here to unlock your business potential. Visit CB Vault today at cbutah.com. Central Bank, voted best bank in Utah Valley. Strong, local, secure. Since 1891, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. When we're trying to digest the news of the day, we have to remember that instant certainty is the enemy of truth. A flashy headline may distract you from the real issue and the important conversations underneath. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. Utah's explosive population. They keep seeing more kids move into their boundaries, and they've been looking at what can be done to meet the growth. Is changing the debate on school district boundaries in Utah County. A very viable option is to stay together as a district. This week, Alpine schools hear from parents about splitting into separate smaller districts or staying put. How do we handle meteoric student growth? Listen this week. The future of Utah schools on KSL News Radio. 559 traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, travel through the valley on I-15, still clear on both I-15 and I-80 thus far coming over from Tooele County. It's been pretty light on most of our city streets. Haven't seen any Mountain View or Bangor uh, slowdowns. 
pop up just yet. Pretty quiet as well in Davis and Weber County, both on the freeway. And if you're going to take Legacy Parkway or even uh, the West Davis Corridor, no slowdowns have been on either of those secondary streets. Eric? In Utah County, you're looking at a normal pace uh, from uh, Provo to Point of the Mountain. That's a 20-minute drive if you're getting on at University Avenue. Uh, over out in Eagle Mountain, Saratoga Springs looks good so far. Heading north on Redwood Road. And then if you're uh, getting over to the freeway from Redwood, all of the usual routes, which get congested later, uh, particularly 2100 north, uh, those all are looking good at the moment. We do have one crash out in Spanish Fork Canyon. This is about a mile into the canyon. It's very windy out there, and we do have some uh, north. Uh, eastbound, westbound slowing uh, at, uh, going by that particular spot. Now into the mountains uh, on Parley's, uh, through Parley's Canyon, I-80 does look good so far this morning. Get Mr. Max Performance Missionary Package, including one performance suit, four and collar stretch shirts, three ties, one mission belt, one pair of Echo or Johnson & Murphy shoes, just $595. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. I just noticed a wind weather alert on the KSL weather page. So they're saying gusts of up to 60 miles an hour this morning until noon. We have rain today in the forecast. Rain mixed with snow tonight into tomorrow. Right now, it's 45 downtown. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. KSL News Time is 6 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Amanda Dixon. Tim has the day off. KSL's top story, more snow is on its way to the Wasatch Front, and that's just going to pile on to an already healthy snowpack. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage, March Storms. Adam? Amanda, in just the last few days, the amount of water in our snowpack hit the average level we've seen uh, really ever since we started recording this statistic decades ago. This means even if it didn't snow again for the next month, our water supply is still going to be A-OK for the year, but that's not the case. We do have more snow uh, coming. This storm starting this morning, we're already seeing valley rain and mountain snow come down. That's going to continue into tomorrow and a chance for valley snow tomorrow morning. With this storm, our mountains could get another foot to a foot and a half of snow, meaning it's going to be more water to go around this spring. Reporting live, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Today's storm will have plenty of wind with mountain snow, increasing avalanche danger. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kikuchi continues our team coverage March storms. The snow from today and tomorrow's storm will create conditions like those on Sunday when four human caused avalanches were triggered. The Utah Avalanche Center reports the avalanche conditions will be rated as low but the winds create slabs that are shallow and still dangerous and tricky. Skiers and snowboarders are advised to avoid wind-blown areas with compacted snow that looks like concrete. Anyone venturing into the backcountry is advised to check the Avalanche Center's website for up-to-date conditions. A couple of bills aimed at helping renters fail to make it through the state legislature. Senator Todd Weiler supported a bill to help renters get evictions off their records. But he tells KSL TV there were other bills he had some issues with. There's a delicate balance right now in Utah law between renters and landlords. And I felt like that one was kind of maybe trying to alter that balance and give a little bit too much to renters. Another bill would have required landlords to disclose certain defects to potential tenants. Salt Lake City is giving renters a place to voice concerns over potential housing scams. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with more. Peter? Amanda, evictions and landlord disagreements could be some of the complaints streaming into Salt Lake City's new website. It's called the Consumer Protection Portal, and basically, renters who believe they have a problem must name a person, a date, location, and evidence about that problem. But this isn't a blank check for any complaint. And it also has to be for specific reasons. They can't just be because somebody requested repairs, which are a landlord's duty. That's housing and consumer protection analyst Eric Fronberg. The website says a response should come within five days of the complaint, and the city won't pursue legal action in these cases, but the complaints could inform future policy. Reporting live, Peter Johnston. KSL News Radio. Loneliness has been a major problem for young renters since the pandemic, but a new apartment complex in downtown Salt Lake City is trying to remedy that. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with more. Michael? Amanda, it's called the Salt Lake Crossing, and it's basically a co living experience aimed at young adults. Residents have their private rooms and privies, but the rest of the complex is built to create connections and community. We're talking communal spaces here, like shared kitchens or common living rooms and accessible luxury amenities all built around the rooms. 
The complex would also cater to short-term renters as well, but at the end of the day, the whole goal here is to build that community and combat loneliness. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. The special counsel who investigated President Biden's handling of classified documents gets questioned by the House Judiciary Committee today. For the first time, lawmakers will hear directly from Robert Hur about why he included references to the president's memory in his report. Hur wrote last month that Biden's handling of classified material shouldn't result in charges. He said in large part it's because a jury would find Biden to be a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory. ABC Stephen Portnoy says the president's aides have furiously pushed back on Hur's assessment. First look traffic now on a Tuesday morning, and we go back over to you, Andy. Amanda, just one crash that's affecting drivers. That's coming out of Spanish Fort Canyon uh, near the windmills. Uh, we've got a westbound crash uh, that, uh, in the really windy conditions there. Otherwise, uh, not much going on. Freeways all clear, Ogden, Salt Lake to Provo in both directions. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Your car may be recording and sharing information about how you drive. ABC's Derek Dennis has more. The New York Times report that data clearinghouse LexisNexis is working with insurance companies and their collaboration could drive your insurance rates higher. GM's OnStar service has a smart driver feature which tracks driver habits as a way to improve safety. GM confirmed to the Times that it shares select insights with LexisNexis and another data broker, but says the program is optional to customers and that drivers can unenroll at any time. Auto insurance rates are up 26% this year, rising six times faster than overall inflation. Salt Lake Airport officials are working on a fix this morning after groundwater started seeping into the tunnel connecting the A and B gates. That already long, long walk between gates A and B was flooded, causing airport workers to think fast, opening a utility channel on the side of the underground tunnel that normally ushers those passengers through concourses. Airport spokesperson Nancy Vollmer says the airport is built on a lake bed and digging through water has been a cornerstone of construction there. There's occasional issues that will we see a little bit of water water leakage through the walls, so we always address that very quickly. We have never had a leak to this extent. They initiated a bus bridge to transport passengers who require special assistance. A temporary fix stopped the water leak. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. Police in Sandy are urging people to drive safely after they've seen an increase in speeding right in front of schools. KSL TV's Andrew Adams is following the story. Police don't want to see the bad road behavior continue especially in the early morning hours, with the time change to daylight savings. They hope drivers consider the realities. If you're doing 60 miles an hour within one second, you're traveling nearly 100 feet, and you're not going to be able to stop. Police say they've been handing out speeding tickets to drivers in front of Alta High School, some drivers going nearly 70 miles an hour. It looks like the commute is very smooth this morning, heading toward downtown Salt Lake, I-15, I-80, all looking good. But we'll check it. Traffic and weather together coming up next. Bigger stories demand more accountability, more experience, more trust. If it's like an election day or we're expecting some bad weather, KSL presents the story. I'm biased. It's a good local source. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Do you know how to tell if a clogged drain is something to worry about or not? What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and I understand it's annoying and inconvenient, but sometimes a clogged drain can be a sign there's a more serious issue with your sewer main line. If the drains in the lowest level of your home aren't draining, or you flush a toilet and it comes up somewhere else like a shower or a floor drain, I'm urging you to look at this as more than just an annoyance. The last thing I want you to experience is a sewer backup. If you're a homeowner experiencing any of these issues, the first step would be to snake the line to see if it's just a blockage, which one of our drain techs can do for only $29. Yep, you heard that right. Any hour services will snake any drain line with normal access for only $29. Sinks, showers, tubs, toilets, floor drains, laundry drains, even that sewer main line that connects to the city. We'll snake any line for just $29. For help with your drain issues, call Any Hour Services at 801-443-7700. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. No one helps more homeowners than Any Hour Services. Join Mike Stevens of Capital Wealth Advisors for Retire Right Radio, Saturdays at 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. That's Retire Right Radio with Mike Stevens, Saturdays at 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. Imagine, it's the final game of the season, but your symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC, are making a comeback. What should you do? 
Keep managing your constipation with belly pain the same old way? Or try getting ahead of your symptoms by talking to your doctor about Linzess, linaclotide. Linzess is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once-daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Imagine, what could relief from IBSC mean for you? Talk to your doctor and say yes to Linzess. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-LINZESS. More snow is on the way to the Wasatch Front, and that plus some winds will create more of an avalanche danger. We're reporting on that this morning on KSL 609 now. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, travel uh, into downtown starting to back up right near 21st South. I'm starting to wonder if maybe we've got a crash there because this is kind of a sudden delay to pop up. It's the only slowdown at the moment between Point of the Mountain and downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, for those of you going through Davis County on I-15, the southbound drive still at minimum travel times. No slowdowns yet on Roy's 5600 South. And it actually looks like uh, all the gates to Hill Air Force Base pretty quiet so far. Eric? No difficulties in Utah County. Getting over to the freeway looks good. And uh, once you're on I-15, you're looking at a 28-minute drive of northbound from Payson up to a point of the mountain. And uh, out into the mountains, uh, no difficulties through uh, Provo and Parley's Canyon on respectively 189 and I-80. However, in Spanish Fork Canyon, you do have a crash about a mile into your trek uh, going out of town. And that is causing a little bit of uh, eastbound, uh, more than westbound uh, slowing. Uh, but uh, in either case, so you got windy conditions and something uh, to pay attention to, something extra to pay attention to. When you choose Performance Automotive and Bountiful, you're choosing Selection. Four locations, Performance Ford Lincoln, Performance Honda, Performance Toyota, and Truck Country. See it all at PerformanceBountiful.com. Eric Butler in KSL Traffic Center. Low pressure moving into the West Coast. That'll bring some rain showers today. High of 49. Overnight dipping off to 33. Tomorrow, 42. Rain snow showers possible. Then we'll bring in some wind on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Yeah, that wind, I had thought that the wind warning was for today until noon, but my mistake, that wind warning for up to 60 mile an hour winds, that doesn't go into effect until late tomorrow night into Thursday at noon. So we'll see some wind today, and I think some of you already are, but not that severe until tomorrow into Thursday. Let's see where our temperature is right now in downtown Salt Lake City. It's 45 degrees. We're starting to see some rain in the vicinity. Coming up in a moment, I'll speak with Karen Travers from the White House. Uh, President Biden said nobody as long as I'm president who earns less than $400,000 will pay an additional penny in federal tax. More on that just ahead as we uh, talk to Karen here on KSL. Streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, where Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Do you know what your credit score is? Man, that credit score has such a huge impact on your life. I know I used to worry all the time about, even if I went and checked my credit score, it would have an impact on my credit score. (laughs) It would make my credit score go down just because I checked it. Well, now, as part of my elevated checking account at Utah Community Credit Union, UCCU, I have this credit score toolbox that gives me all of these, it gives me control over my own credit score, control over correcting errors, and improving my score. It includes things like like checking my score whenever I want to and it doesn't impact the score. It also simplifies the process of reporting any inaccuracy I notice. And the one I really love too is this thing called the credit score simulator. Let's say for instance, I want to take out a loan, but I want to know what the effect will be on my credit score before I take out the loan. I can put into the simulator, okay, I'm going to take out a loan. It's going to be for $20,000. What effect will that? And I can see, oh, okay, I can handle that. Or no, that's too big a hit to my credit score. I better wait on that. They even do credit monitoring, and they have the credit builder loan that we've talked about before. UCCU is always thinking of wonderful ways to help me financially, to keep me and my family financially strong. And this credit score toolbox is a big part of it. And it's all part of elevated checking at UCCU. Find out more at uccu.com or stop by any branch. Utah Community Credit Union, you are going to love where you bank. 
Utah's largest sportsman's expo for the entire family is back. March 21st at Mountain America Expo Center. Bring the family and discover your next adventure. Buy the latest gear. Find the best destinations. Get expert advice at free seminars and activities. Free entry for youth 15 and under. Your life outdoors at the International Sportsman's Expo, March 21st through 24th at Mountain America Expo Center. More info at sportsexpos.com. Transform your old, outdated kitchen with Half Price Granite. For a limited time, Half Price Granite is offering special pricing starting at $25 per square foot installed. That's lower than most big box stores. These prices are some of the lowest around. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite, all starting at $25 per square foot installed. Call 801-486-1700 or visit halfpricegranite.com. Half Price Granite, affordable luxury. Give the star in your life the brightest gift in the world. Name a star after them. This is Rocky Moselle with International Star Registry. For $59 and a call to 800-282-3333 or visit starregistry.com, you can name a star for birthdays, weddings, or even memorials. Over 45 years, we have named millions of stars for celebrities and individuals from around the world. The star you name will be recorded in book form in the U.S. Copyright Office. Visit starregistry.com or call 800-282-3333. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came, and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000, and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. KSL News Time 615. The three things you need to know this hour. First, more snow is on its way, expected to add to an already healthy statewide snowpack. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, a new apartment complex in Salt Lake is designed to help prevent loneliness among young renters. Third, traffic and weather together. Traffic on I-15 slowing a little bit coming into downtown Salt Lake City on the northbound lanes, but it uh, it clears up almost as quickly as it shows up. We haven't had any other freeway delays so far, but uh, crash still affecting drivers coming out of Spanish Fork Canyon right now and into Spanish Fork itself. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today, high of 49. I'm Matt Johnson. 45 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios and time for KSL's top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. Appearing on Capitol Hill today, special counsel Robert Herr, who recommended no charges against President Biden in the classified documents case, but who also described him as an elderly man with a poor memory. Also on Capitol Hill today, a classified briefing from U.S. intelligence agencies on the security threat posed by TikTok. Lawmakers are threatening to ban the app unless its Chinese owners divest. TikTok influencers like Ophelia Nichols with 12 million followers are speaking out. It is life-changing for people, and taking TikTok away would do so much more harm than any of them think that TikTok is doing right now. The New York Times reporting this morning that Boeing failed 33 of the 89 audits the FAA conducted after a door panel made by the company blew off an Alaska Airlines plane back in January. A fiery crash in western Illinois leaves three preschoolers and two adults dead. ABC's Alex Preche with more. Five-year-old Maria Miller, three-year-olds Andrew Miller and Noah Driscoll, along with both drivers David Kufal and Angela Spiker, all killed when police say the bus carrying the children crossed into oncoming traffic, colliding with a semi-truck about 60 miles west of Springfield. An aid ship loaded with 200 tons of food provided by World Food Kitchen has set sail from Cyprus for Gaza in a pilot program. You're listening to ABC News. President Biden said the following this week. He said, nobody as long as I'm president who earns less than $400,000 will pay an additional penny in federal taxes. He has been responding to this interview on CNBC that former President Trump did where the president was accusing him of slashing or intending to slash entitlement programs. But President Biden was speaking in New Hampshire. That was yesterday afternoon. And he talked about how he would never raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000. And he also criticized the former president for enacting tax breaks for wealthy Americans and large corporations that, according to him, exploded the federal deficit. Um, 
I'm hoping to connect with ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers to give us a little bit more on the context of of these comments. And is this becoming a focal point of the campaign, this question of entitlements and taxes? Any chance of no, no, Karen, yet? Shoot. I was hoping we'd get a chance to talk to her. We also heard, of course, you know, President Biden released his budget which is something presidents always do, uh, especially in election years, although Congress ultimately sets the budget and may not take up the president's budget or even key portions of the president's budget. But the president did release that that budget, sort of a wish list from President Biden yesterday. It looks like we're not going to get Karen Dogg on it. Well, maybe we can uh, connect with her at, at another time. Right now, 619, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, and we start with you, Andy. Amanda, a little bit of delay, North 15 near 21st South downtown on uh, the main corridor of the freeway. That's the only slow spot that has appeared on the drive in Draper to downtown uh, stretch of uh, I-15. Davis County hasn't seen anything approaching a delay yet, and so far, at least getting to the freeway hasn't been too bad in places like Roy, Clearfield, or Kaysville, uh, and the Ogden City streets, after some earlier slowing along Washington Boulevard, have cleared out for now. Eric? It's bunching up just a little bit on SR 36 in Tooele County, uh, just south of uh, the uh, Stansbury, right, actually right in Stansbury Park. You got a little bit of northbound, southbound congestion. I 15 Utah County looking good. Northbound from Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain. That's 24 minute drive. Getting into the mountains, no big issues right now uh, through Provo Canyon on 189 or through Partley's Canyon on I 80. Don't let tax problems ruin your life. Let Utah Tax Attorney Jordan Wilcox handle the IRS so you don't have to. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast has the inclement weather in the first half of the week. We'll go 49 today with a chance for showers through the evening hours. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers. And then we get some east winds on Thursday. Partly cloudy, 50 degrees. Could see the winds linger into Friday, 53 the high. High pressure takes over Saturday, 55. Sunday, 58. Hey, we're back to 61 on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Are you seeing any rain where you are? Any rain or snow this morning yet where, where you are? I always appreciate our weather watchers who let me know when, when the storm is moving in and what you're starting to see, if it's safe for you to do so. If you can text me and let me know if it's raining or snowing where you are, the uh, KSL text line is 57500, and I always appreciate our weather watchers. The seven-day forecast, by the way, is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. All right, today our eyes are on the Oklahoma State UCF game. Because the winner of that game will face BYU tomorrow morning. Won't this be fun to have a, a Wednesday morning basketball game? Not good for productivity at the office, I suppose. But the game tips off tomorrow morning, and BYU will take on the winner of that Oklahoma State UCF game tomorrow morning. The tip-off is at 10.30, but we have extended pregame coverage with Mitch and Matt here on KSL News Radio, And that starts right at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And that's sponsored by Ryan Valuation, formerly Economic Partners. Coming up next, we'll get another look at Money News. When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede. Except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double pane windows and frames, any style, any color. See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah, they install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100 or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. Travel back to the magical world of ancient China with Shen Yu and enjoy the incredible art of classical Chinese dance. Performances on March 20th and March 24th at Eccles Theater. Reserve your tickets today. It's the question that's been on everybody's mind and it's about to be answered. When will Gillette Heating and Air offer plumbing services? You want to know? Yeah! The answer is now. 
to celebrate, Gillette is offering a free tankless water heater when you buy a high-efficiency heating and cooling system. For a limited time while supplies last, call Gillette today for heating, AC, and now plumbing. Call 385-GET-HEAT. Carrier, turn to the experts. Alpine Home Medical, we bring wellness home. Hi, I'm Jay Broadbent with Alpine Home Medical. There's a story that came to us from a real customer, and I wanted to share it with you. We came in looking for a scooter for our mother. The staff at Alpine showed us different options for scooters and battery-operated wheelchairs and helped us find one that was easy for her to handle and easy for us to get in and out of her car. They have fabulous customer service. We know when you walk through our doors, you deserve to be cared for. We really do have the best staff in the state. Discover the Alpine Home Medical difference. When you need assistance, we're here for you. You should know we accept most major insurances, so stop by any of our 11 locations today and explore our high-quality inventory. We love hearing about your experiences. Visit us online at alpinehomemedical.com. I'm Dave Cauley, investigative journalist and host of the podcast, Cold. Don't miss Cold's new season three, where I look into the unsolved disappearance of Cherie Warren, a woman last seen leaving her job at a Salt Lake City office in 1985. Police cast suspicion on Cherie's estranged husband and boyfriend, but never made any arrests or recovered Cherie's remains. Find Cold season three, the search for Cherie, anywhere you get your podcasts. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Ray-Ban's Meta Sunglasses can be your tour guide. The AI-powered glasses can now identify and describe landmarks. It's still in beta, but Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg says it's very promising so far. The Body Shop is closing dozens of North American locations as the chain files for bankruptcy. The Skin Care and Cosmetics Store was founded in 1976, but I guess sales were slowing. The bankruptcy was announced after poor holiday sales. KSL Drive's Show Me is launching its long-awaited electric car later this month. The Chinese smartphone company says they could start shipping out in two to three years. The exact price is not out yet, but it's rumored to be around $100,000. Yeah, that's not as outrageous as it used to be, is it? With so many trucks costing $70,000, $80,000. All right, let's get a look at your money at this moment, see what the futures markets are doing they look pretty unchanged. The Dow futures are basically unchanged. They're minus two. Uh, the S&P is up 11, which is two-tenths of a percent. NASDAQ moving a little bit more. The NASDAQ futures up 75, which is four-tenths percent. Crude oil is up just three cents. We're at $77.96 a barrel. Coming up, we do have some slowdowns, I guess. Northbound I-15, that's about 2100 south. But everything else is uh, rolling along well on a Tuesday morning, but we'll check it. Traffic and weather together, coming up next. Savings. Now that's speaking the Lowe's language. And with my Lowe's rewards, your savings just keep coming. Save money with member-only offers and earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards just for you. Because Lowe's knows you earned it, literally. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash MyLowe'sRewards. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details. Subject to change. Ew. Gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. Two years ago, Americans watched in horror as a crisis unfolded at the Kabul airport. There's desperation and anguish. More than 80,000 Afghans have since arrived in America, but this story is still unfolding. I'm Andrea Smartin. In my new podcast, Stranger Becomes Neighbor, we'll find out what happens to these new arrivals in our communities. Who would help our newest neighbors? 
follow us at kslpodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. Saturday, in front of a sellout crowd. 14, 10, and 5 for Spencer Johnson in his final home game as a BYU Cougar. Couldn't happen to a better guy. BYU clinched its place in the Big 12 tournament. These seniors have been so incredible for us and so special, and I'm just so proud of these guys. This week, the Cougars play in their first ever Big 12 postseason. Special extended pregame starts Wednesday at 9 a.m. with tip-off at 10.30 on Utah's legacy home of the Cougars, KSL News Radio. Excited for that game tomorrow morning. All right, coming up on 629, traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. How's it looking now, Andy? Well, Mandy, we got something going on on North 15, right around the 21st South Freeway turn off and uh, right by over the overpass, uh, 21st South itself. So that's causing a little bit of delay as you head into downtown. Looks like people having to move to the left to get around something. Uh, but that's the only delay between Bluffdale and Salt Lake City. And it's been looking good on the southbound drive from Ogden to downtown. Coming out of Tooele, I-80 still clear. Eric? Well, if you've been wondering about that crash in Spanish Fork Canyon, still there. This is about a mile into your drive on Highway 6 uh, going into the canyon. And uh, lots of uh, emergency vehicles still around, and it's still very windy through that area. So be careful if you're heading out to Price this morning. I-15 uh, otherwise looks good throughout the county. From Santa Quinn to the county line, uh, that's a 30-minute drive in Utah County. No problems along the Wasatch Bank on US-40 and I-80 through uh, Parley's Canyon. That's also in good shape. For a limited time, open a 12-month certificate from Cypress Credit Union and get 5.25% APY. Learn more at any branch or visit cypresscu.com. Eric Butler in KSL Traffic Center. We do have rain in the forecast for today. Rain, uh, let's see, a 70% chance of rain. In fact, let me just check. Yes, some of you are already letting me know you're seeing rain. A little bit of rain in West Jordan. Rain around 90th south at Bangadar. Appreciate your letting me know. You can always let me know if you see any uh, weather out there that I can share with everybody. If it's safe for you to text me at 57500. So today's high will be 49. Tomorrow will drop down to 42. That rain will mix with snow overnight. Then tomorrow night into Thursday, we're going to see winds. We even have a, a high wind advisory in effect with the winds predicted to be as high as 60 miles an hour. That's to Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And then it starts to warm up. Look at this. We get all the way back to 61 by next Monday. Right now, we do have a few showers and 45 degrees. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 6.30. Tim has the day off. KSL's top story this hour tonight is the first chance for people to comment on proposed changes to the Alpine School District. Some of those proposals include splitting the district. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage the future of Utah schools. Adam? Amanda, the district hired out-of-state MGT Consulting to study what they could do to accommodate the steady growth they continue to see to this day. And the company came up with six options, which vary from keeping Utah's largest school district together to splitting into two, maybe even three school districts. They'll hold the first public meeting where people can comment on those proposals tonight at Timpanogos High School in the auditorium at 7 o'clock. They'll also have another meeting at Vista Heights Middle School tomorrow night and one more at American Fork Junior High on Thursday. Now, there's a long list of required steps to create a new school district in Utah. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr reports on what it takes uh, to get that process going. Currently, there are three ways to begin the process of creating a new school district, either through a citizen's initiative petition at the request of the local school board or at the request of a city within the boundaries of the school district. The petitions or requests will then go to county clerks, an advisory board, a feasibility study, public meetings, a county election. After all those steps are taken, the lieutenant governor has to then give approval before a new district is created. So, Adam, the the Alpine School District isn't the only district seeing a lot of growth, is it? Yeah, man, there's actually several hotspots for growth, even around our state. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera has actually been looking into that. Even though Utah County holds the top spot in population growth, Nate Curry with the Wasatch Front Regional Council points out Salt Lake and Davis counties are their own hotspots for development. Southwest Salt Lake County, that's definitely experiencing a ton of growth. But also there's, you know, like the infill growth that's occurring. Uh, and, and you look at places like, you know, downtown Salt Lake City with all of the new housing that's being built there or around Farmington Station, for example. Curry said with different types of growth occurring, and that gives Utahns choices of where they want to live and choose the lifestyle that suits their situation. But as our landscape evolves, 
Let's hope our strategy for schools can keep up. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. President Biden released his budget wish list. This budget reflects the priorities of the president as he hits the campaign trail. He was talking about this yesterday in New Hampshire. He is traveling to Wisconsin and Michigan this week, and they're going to say, look, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we want Congress to actually move forward on. And they won't, but he can say this is what we're trying to get done and deliver for you. ABC's White House correspondent Karen Travers says get ready to hear a lot more about Social Security and lower costs for families on the campaign trail. Members of Congress will hear a classified briefing today on the security and the potential ban of TikTok. ABC's M. Wynn reports. The company says a ban would trample the First Amendment rights of 170 million Americans. People who make a living on TikTok videos have flooded Capitol Hill opposing the bill. 90% of our sales are on TikTok shop and we would basically, I mean, we would lose all of our customers. At a national security hearing yesterday, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned the Chinese government may be able to use TikTok to control software on millions of users' devices. Wynn says a vote on the future of TikTok, TikTok should happen tomorrow. Four deer were killed and left to rot, and the Division of Wildlife Resources wants to find out who did it and why. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with more. Peter? Amanda, this is a really strange case. These four were all bucks, and their hunter took their heads and left their bodies. We know it was a hunter because the Division of Wildlife Resources says it found rifle wounds on the bodies, and it appears the animals were killed around the time of last fall's muzzleloader hunt season. Division of Wildlife Resources officer Daniel Clancy says these unlawful killings prevent the meat from going to lawful hunters who might need that meat. It's a Class B misdemeanor here to let animals waste. Now, these are just a few bodies in a larger trend of illegal hunting in Utah. Last year, over a 1,000 fish and wild animals got killed illegally. And the Division of Wildlife Resources says that's a loss of $619,000. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. First look traffic now, and here is Andy Farnsworth. And right now, travel on I-15, back to the speed limit around 21st South. We had some heavy traffic uh, on South 15 in North Salt Lake, but that's gone, at least for now. So all the freeways are looking good. We're just starting to see some city street uh, volumes increasing, including Stansbury Park, SR36, Bangor, and Mountain View around 3500 South. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. UDOT is speaking out about the Mountain View corridor safety concerns after two fatal accidents in a month. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson explains. Initial reports show accidents at the same intersection in West Valley City were caused because of running a red light. However, UDOT spokesperson John Gleason says anytime there's a fatal accident, they look at the road from an engineering standpoint to see if there's anything they can improve. Because people tend to take that roadway at a high rate of speed, in recent years they've added more red light warning signals before intersections and made the lights wait a few seconds longer to turn green. Gleason adds that while they do everything they can to make sure the roads are as safe as possible, it's important to follow all the rules of the road. Haiti's prime minister has resigned. ABC's Matt Gutman reports several armed gangs have been demanding the resignation for weeks. All parties involved have agreed to what's called a transitional presidential council, which essentially will be made up of seven different people within Haitian society, those people yet to be named, who will essentially act collectively as Haiti's president until elections can be had. Quick reminder for our listeners, Haiti's president, Jovenel Moïse, was assassinated in July of 2021. That is why our Ariel Henry, the acting prime minister, came to power two and a half years ago and has been in power ever since. The country was in chaos over the weekend when gangs took over government buildings and airports to prevent the prime minister from re-entering the country. 30 million Americans are facing prescription drug shortages, and Utah is one of the states struggling the most. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit joins me live. Michael? Amanda, we're second in the nation right now for prescription shortages. Only Louisiana is beating us. To paint a more specific picture, 36% of Utah residents are facing shortages and, uh, and are facing the adverse health effects that come with it. Now, as for the cause of this all, the FDA is pointing towards several potential reasons, including manufacturing and quality problems, along with high post-pandemic demand and lower generic uh, drug costs. So to address this, looks like the FDA will try a few things, like prolonging shelf life when appropriate and speeding up the process to evaluate and authorize new production facilities. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. We have dry roads for the most part, a good pace this morning commuting into the city. Uh, I-15, I-215 all look good, but we'll check at traffic and weather together coming up next. 
Spend your workday with a talk show that makes you feel better about the news. Dave and Dejanovic. They have a good dynamic between the two of them. Sometimes I'll take Dave's side and sometimes I'll take Debbie's side. They're great. Dave and Debbie, live from 9 to noon, or podcast the show on the app for KSL News Radio. Hey, have you saved more than $200,000 in an IRA or 401k? You may not realize it now, but you've got a big problem on your hands, and that problem is taxes. Because if you don't take advantage of some tax planning strategies now, Uncle Sam could take a big chunk of your hard-earned retirement savings. Learn how you could reduce the taxes on your IRA and 401k with a free retirement tax savings analysis. It's from Boss Retirement Solutions. If you've saved more than $200,000, schedule your free tax strategy session now by calling 801-896-9622. Discover the tax planning strategies that could dramatically reduce your taxes in retirement. Call 801-896-9622. That's 801-896-9622. Advisory services offered through Boss Retirement Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Insurance products and services offered through Boss Retirement Solutions. I like daffodils, tulips, the big dinner plate dahlias. I loved being in the garden, but I wasn't going to be able to because I couldn't not only walk, but I couldn't really stand on my foot without being in pain. It was excruciating. So my husband said, let's go to the Good Feet store. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Terry live the life they love without letting their feet get in the way. This nice young man said, I think I can help you. He got the arch support and I was fitted and I kept walking back and forth across the store and I looked at my husband and burst into tears because it was the first time in a year that I have not had any pain in my foot. I have had no pain since the day I bought him. Now I can do whatever I want. There isn't any place on my property that doesn't have flowers blooming 365 days a year. I still can't believe it. My name is Terry and that's my good feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Goodfeet Store. Stop by the Goodfeet Store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1-800-NEW-FEET or visit goodfeet.com. The news is brought to you by the Goodfeet Store. The life you love starts here. KSL News Time 639. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, travel through Davis County right now has been pretty good on the southbound drive. I am seeing traffic getting a little bit busier at the south gate to Hill Air Force Base, as is the west gate. Uh, no real slowdowns along 5600 South in Roy yet. Salt Lake Valley, uh, Bangor has got a little bit of slowing at 35th South, but uh, I-15, 201, and I-80 out of Tooele County are all clear of delay. Eric? Looks pretty good on the east belt if you're heading north from Knudsen's Corner at 6200 South, up past Mount Olympus to the mouth of Parley's Canyon. Northbound uh, on Foothill Drive also in great shape if you uh, go into the mountains. I-80 is looking good this morning. We don't have any accidents or delays going out to Park City. And I-15 Utah County, that's also in good shape from Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today with a high of 49. Overnight will drop off to 33. Tomorrow, 42. Rain, snow showers possible. Then some east winds on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. We do have some light rain this morning in Midvale around 7200 South and 150 West. Thank you, listener, for letting me know about that. You can always let me know about weather in your area if it's safe to text at 57500. Right now, it is a little bit warmer. Our temperature downtown, 46 degrees. And coming up in just a moment, we'll learn more about these bills that the legislature turned down that would have put in place what advocates call some basic protections for renters. We'll learn more about that coming up on KSL, streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, where Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Time now for Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. Who doesn't doctor their photos? I see you all on Instagram with your beauty filters and the anti-aging filters. Every time you post, you're a perfect specimen. So which of us should cast the first stone at Princess Kate? And we'll never be wrong. The future Queen of England is taking four months off to recover from some kind of surgery. Three months in, not a single picture of Kate. No smiling in a hospital bed with the thumbs up. No home resting with the kids, just 
just nothing till this photo of Kate and the kids released Sunday. A photo that should have shot down all the conspiracy theories, but not quite. This morning, these were not the headlines Kensington Palace was hoping for. Turns out the photo is doctored. Not with a beauty filter, but an unnatural hand is wrapped around one of the kids. Parts of her outfit don't line up right. It's the kind of photo fail the Kardashians are famous for. When they look ravishing and beautiful, but there's a foot coming out of somebody's armpit. So now the Kate and the kids photo has been exposed and the conspiracy theorists are going berserk on social media. It's weird to me that Kate is wearing a sweater that looks suspiciously exactly like that cream sweater, except just happens to be darker, with the same exact shoes and the same exact kind of looking pants. This sleuth is saying the picture is from a couple of months before her surgery and they changed the colors of the clothing. The palace is hiding how sick she really is or or that she's getting divorced, or, or it's a weekend at Bernie's situation. This morning, Kate posted, Oops, I messed up in Photoshop. But you know what? She doesn't owe England an explanation, except that her princess salary, and she does get one, is two and a half million dollars a year. Let me live that fantasy. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. Brought to you by the Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox. IRS harassing you. The Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox can help. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. Back in 2004, got a letter from the IRS indicating that I was no longer married and therefore they were to change my filing status to single. We were, we were really upset. I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. Listen to what actual clients have had to say about working with us. As soon as we met Jordan and he started talking to us, he, number one, he made us feel like we weren't the imbeciles that the IRS had made us feel like for so many years. I'm Jordan Wilcox. Let's solve your IRS tax nightmare. We have reduced our tax liability by over 42 thousand dollars. Visit TaxHelpUT.com or call 801-657-5951 to schedule your free consultation today. We can move forward with confidence and assurance that we're okay. That's TaxHelpUT.com. It's marvelous. Just marvelous. 645 now at KSL. The three things you need to know this hour. First, tonight is the first public meeting about several proposals to change or split the Alpine School District. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, members of Congress will hear a classified briefing today on the security threats involved with the TikTok app. Third, traffic and weather together. Heavier traffic starting to show up Redwood Road in West Valley, Mountain View and Bangor near 3500 South, and a bit more now in some spots on city streets in Provo and Ogden, but no big delays anywhere. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Wet weather back in the forecast and even some wind. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now it's cloudy and 46 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for KSL's top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. On Capitol Hill today, Special Counsel Robert Herr, who determined that no charges were warranted after classified documents were found at President Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home. In Washington, here's ABC White House correspondent Karen Travers. During his interview with Special Counsel Robert Herr, President Biden repeatedly insisted he never intentionally kept classified material and that if he had found them, he would have returned them. He told the Special Counsel, quote, I had no purpose for them and I think it would be inappropriate for me to keep clearly classified documents. The president did, however, admit to keeping personal notes from his time as vice president, saying, quote, they're my notes and they're my property. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. An aid ship loaded with 200 tons of food headed for Gaza has set sail from Cyprus. World Food Kitchen gathered it. It's being transported by an aid group trying out the new opening of that sea corridor into Gaza. Three preschoolers and two adults all killed in a fiery crash in western Illinois after a semi collided with a school bus. This is ABC News. Let's go in depth now. Renters advocates are calling for change after state lawmakers opted not to pass a number of bills aimed to help tenants. KSL TV's Daniel Woodruff has more. Tanner Bennett goes to BYU and lives right by campus. He's rented for years and advocates for fellow renters. He hoped this legislative session would bring some wins for that group 
but he felt things ended on a sour note. Unfortunately, pretty unsurprised. Multiple pro-renter bills were introduced but failed to advance. One would have required landlords to disclose certain defects to potential tenants. Another would have added a renter to a key state housing affordability group. And then... They're not asking for the world. Two proposals from Representative Marsha Judkins. She wanted to let renters get certain evictions wiped off their records faster and require landlords to give more notice of rent increases. I feel like there's an imbalance there that needs to be remedied. Despite support from a key landlord group, both her bills fell short. It was very frustrating. Senator Todd Weiler supported a faster path for removing evictions, but not mandating more notice of rent going up. There's a delicate balance right now in Utah law between renters and landlords, and I felt like that one was kind of maybe trying to alter that balance and, and, and give a little bit too much to renters. He says lawmakers have to consider property rights and not penalize landlords trying to pay their bills. We don't want to get to a point where no landlord can collect you know, a return for their property. Overall, not the tune Tanner wanted to hear. He hopes more renters will speak out and eventually push these issues across the finish line. There needs to be something that happens to make sure that our renters aren't being taken advantage of. Appreciate that in-depth report here on KSL at 15 and 45. 649 now. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. How about now, Andy? Well, right now, some slowdowns appearing more on Bangor Highway at the intersection starting at 47 South, going up towards the 201 freeway. But I-15 still clear between Draper and Salt Lake. And the southbound drive from Ogden to downtown still only taking you just over 30 minutes. Uh, some heavier traffic at the south gate to Hill Air Force Base and on Hillfield Road northbound around Antelope Drive. Eric? And no problems right now in Utah County. Uh, we're looking at an I-15 drive from Provo to Lehi. That's about uh, 20 minutes if you're getting on at University Avenue. Getting over to the freeway for Eagle Mountain Saratoga Springs drivers uh, from Redwood Road over to the freeway. Uh, just a little bit of congestion on 2100 North, both at Redwood and the 2300 West intersection. Along the Wasatch back, uh, no trouble on US 40 going by Jornell Reservoir. And I-80 through Parley's Canyon is in good shape too. The Serta mattress sale is happening now at Two Brothers Mattress. Get a Queen Serta mattress for $379. That's a Serta for $379. Visit one of their five stores or twobrothersmattress.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 8 forecast. We've got some wet weather back in the seven day. 49 today with a chance for showers. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers. Then it's partly cloudy Thursday with a high of 50. But east winds possible, not only Thursday, but potentially into Friday with a high of 53 there. Saturday, 55, high pressure building. Sunday, 58, sunny skies, mostly sunny, and 61 by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. We've had reports this morning of rain uh, in West Jordan, rain in Midvale, and I just got a text now, steady sprinkles in Cottonwood Heights. Good morning, Cottonwood Heights. Right now, downtown, it's 46 degrees, and the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. We are focusing on the future of Utah schools this morning. Tonight is the first public hearing in the discussion about what to do in the Alpine School District. There are a number of options that are laid out, and they want public comment, and they'll take it tonight. There's another meeting tomorrow night, a third on Thursday. But tomorrow morning at this time, we'll talk more about this issue. How do vouchers and school choice affect district population projections? Which affects how you decide how to move forward in districts? And what does that mean for your taxpayer dollars? That's going to be interesting. The future of Utah schools, our special continues this week, this morning, and tomorrow morning here on KSL News Radio. Believe it or not, it's time for spring cleaning. Beat the spring cleaning rush with big savings and priority booking today. You're not the only one who's tired of winter this year. Your carpets are too. With Zero Res's platinum rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water, they'll extract all that nasty out so your home will look and smell like a home should. With their no residue difference, it's what separates Zero Res from the competition. Just check out the 3,300 raving customer reviews online with a 4.8 Google rating and see what the hype is all about. 
lot. Right now, get one room of carpet cleaning starting at just $25 with a four-room minimum. And also take 25% off all other services like air ducts, tile, upholstery, and rugs by using promo code CLEANWEEK to celebrate Utah's Cleaning Week. You owe it to yourself and your family to breathe healthy, happy, and clean. Call Zero Res right now, 801-288-9376. Or go online to ZeroRes.com and say you want the Clean Week special. Zero Res. Spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. Celebrate Easter. Join Jenny Oaksbaker for The Redeemer, the music of the life of Jesus Christ. March 18th at Abravanel Hall. Save 30% using code KSL30. Tickets at JennyOaksbaker.com. My name is Dale Pazinski. I volunteer with United Way to help the homeless in my community learn computer skills and build a basic resume. I don't just wear this shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters. That's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at CertaPro.com. already feels like home. Boyd Matheson. Listening to inside sources is a little different from just reading the headlines because we're always going to get you into that think again moment. We have experts from around the country, across the world, and right here local to home that'll help us dive in and get past just the hype, the fluff, the fake fights, and the false choice so we can get into the news to help you connect the dots and make the news make sense. Join Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3, on KSL News Radio. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Reddit is planning to go public. I did not know Reddit was not already public. It will be the first social media company to go public in years. They expect to price shares between $31 and $34 each. They'll start with 22 million shares offered. Airbnb is banning the use of indoor security cameras regardless of their location. They were previously allowed in common areas like hallways and living rooms if it was disclosed on the listings page. To simplify the policy and protect your privacy, none will be allowed inside from now on. Buffalo Wild Wings is celebrating March Madness, man, that's just around the corner, by offering buy one, get one wing orders and a chance to, are you ready for this? A chance to beat a real live buffalo in a bracket. The company is hosting Beat the Buffalo, where a real buffalo will fill out a bracket. How the buffalo will do that is not disclosed. And fans compete against the buffalo. All right, let's get a look at your money at this moment. Wow, the futures markets just shot up. Huh, that's interesting. I wonder what caused that. The Dow is up 134 now. That's three-tenths of a percent. The S&P is up 33. That's six-tenths. And the NASDAQ shot up to one, up 155 on the futures. That's almost nine-tenths percent. I'm looking to see if there are there any headlines that, that prompted that, because that went up like, you know, about 100 points on the Dow just in a half hour. We'll continue to follow that and find out what's going on there. But next, we'll get another look at traffic and weather. A Bangator Highway Mountain View Corridor is starting to get busy now for northbound commuters. We'll check that and the rest of your commute just ahead. You wouldn't trust a butcher to babysit your pet pig. You wouldn't trust a lumberjack to repair your antiques. Or a professional wrestler to be your massage therapist. So why would you trust anyone but AMCO to fix your car? For over 50 years, we've been the trusted experts in transmission repair. Check out AMCO's multiple financing options so you can fix it fast and pay it off slow. Double A, MCO. IVC, Interventional Vascular and Vein Center, is having a Hello Spring special event on Saturday, March 23rd. This will be a free screening for varicose veins at their office in Provo. Don't let leg pain slow you down. Come and learn why starting now is ideal to get you ready for summer. 
IVC has been in business for over 20 years and has been voted the best vein center of Utah Valley for 10 years running. IVC's doctors, advanced practice providers, and sonographers will be on hand to answer your questions. So stop in to IVC on Saturday, March 23rd for a free varicose vein screening. Space is limited, so please RSVP right now. Let's spring new life into your step. Visit iVein.com, iVein.com. That's the letter I, V-E-I-N.com to schedule your new year, new legs free screening at IVC. Because life starts when the pain stops. Discover the power of hands-on learning at Tooele Technical College with an affordable, flexible, and achievable technical education. Apply today at tooeletech.edu, tooeletech.edu. Dave and Degenovic. You may not be interested in everything we talk about, but I guarantee you listen for three hours, we're going to hit several things. Everything from politics to how the economy is impacting your family's pocketbook. Listen for Dave and Degenovic, 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. KSL offers the best daily newsletter in the state. It's the three things you need to know. Every weekday, we deliver quality and relevant content to your inbox. No ads, no spam, just the three things you need to know to be informed about the world around you. Subscribe today. Visit kslnewsradio.com or text the word INBOX to 57500. That's INBOX to 57500. 659 traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. How's it looking, Andy? Amanda, some more slowdowns creeping in on Bangor Highway now near 3500 South. Bountain View hasn't been too bad this morning. 201 Freeway, first little bit of delay near 8400 West showing up. Main corridor of I-15, Ogden through Davis County down into Salt Lake City. Still only a 30-minute travel time. And since no slowdowns have showed up on northbound 15, it's only 20 minutes through the valley. Eric? And northbound I-15, Utah County is also about 20-minute drive from Provo 2 point of the mountain. Getting over to the freeway, a little bit congested uh, as you head from Redwood Road on 2100 North from Redwood over to the freeway. And we'll see if that develops into something more serious. It probably will, uh, but we'll keep an eye on it. Over on the 215 East Belt uh, going by the mountains, uh, northbounders are finding it good going up to Foothill Drive. Just on Foothill Drive, you're seeing a little bit of stoplight uh, congestion as you work your way up towards the University of Utah. I-80 out into the mountains. No big problems this morning if you're going from the mouth of the canyon to the Kimball Junction exit. Need a perfect event venue? There's a place. This is the place Heritage Park. Ideal for weddings, events featuring 11 venues, beautiful grounds, affordability for any celebration. Call or visit thisistheplace.org. I'm Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Yes, we've got rain in the forecast for today, and then it's going to get colder. We might even see some rain mixed with snow overnight. Some winds moving in, particularly tomorrow night into Thursday. Right now it's cloudy, and our temperature downtown, 46 degrees. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock on Utah's Morning News. I'm Amanda Dixon. Tim has the day off. Our top story on the 7 o'clock report. We've hit the average for water in our yearly snowpack, and we've got more snow on the way. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage March Storms. Adam? Amanda, if you look at every snowpack we've ever tracked in state history, we on average have 16 inches of water in that snowpack. But just a few days ago, we hit that water number, meaning any snow we get from here to April is just icing on the cake for our water supply. And more is coming today and tomorrow, more in uh, central and southern Utah Thursday. How much exactly are we looking at? Mountaintop 6 to 12 generally, with the cottonwoods picking up maybe 16 to 18 inches at the highest peaks. KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson says the valleys are mostly going to see rain, but there is a chance to see some snow down here tomorrow morning. Live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. The Utah Avalanche Forecast Center is warning about unstable snow slabs following four human triggered avalanches over the weekend. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kikuchi continues our team coverage March storms. The slab avalanches were shallow, but are still dangerous and can be tricky to see, according to the center's Greg Gagney. There could be similar situations following the storm later today and tomorrow. Terrain where if you got caught even in a small avalanche, it could be consequential. 
So these weren't big avalanches, but they were in consequential terrain. Gagne says the storm is expected to bring high winds. Skiers and snowboarders will want to avoid fresh, wind-drifted snow that's firm and has a chalky appearance. The situation will be especially bad above 9,500 feet. Tammy Kikuchi, KSL News Radio. North Ogden police are asking everyone to keep an eye out after a reported attempted kidnapping of a nine-year-old. The girl tells police a man in a white SUV stopped in the neighborhood and asked her to get in to get some ice cream. She instead took off and went home. Police say they are taking the report seriously and it's a good idea to talk with our kids about stranger danger. Several bills designed to help renters in Utah failed to get through the state legislature. Representative Marsha Judkins proposed the bills and spoke to KSL TV about the lack of protection for renters. They're not asking for the world. I feel like there's an imbalance there that needs to be remedied. One of the bills required landlords to disclose certain defects to potential tenants. A couple of longtime homeowners are refusing to sell their property while Salt Lake City develops all around them. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston has more live. Peter? Amanda, the residents of Chicago Street get a call about every month from developers who say they want to buy them out. Building Salt Lake spoke to these holdouts, some of whom have lived in the same houses for decades. Others have stayed for far shorter, including construction workers whose homeowner plans to tear down the building and to build new units on top. Many say they don't want to leave because there are no more affordable homes in the capital. This is part of a larger push for affordable housing in Salt Lake City, and it's part of a plan to make units in this area that would allow people to access public transit more easily. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. A new type of apartment block is going up downtown Salt Lake with rooms designed to combat loneliness. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit joins us live. Michael? Amanda, a lot of up-and-coming renters struggle with loneliness in the aftermath of the pandemic. So to this end, Salt Lake Crossing took a page out of the shared living experience you'd probably see at a college. In essence, you have private suites built around communal spaces like kitchens or living areas. The crossing also comes with luxury amenities and is located conveniently close to Front Runner and the Delta Center. Now this is all to help foster connection among residents and it looks like they found a market. Many young people are already pre-leasing. The doors will probably open later in April. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. The special counsel who investigated President Biden's handling of classified documents testifies today before the House Judiciary Committee. The hearing marks the first time the special counsel will publicly discuss what he submitted in his report to the Attorney General last month. Robert Hur recommended that no criminal charges be brought in the handling of classified material, in large part because he felt a jury would see Joe Biden as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Democrats are sure to press her on why he said all that. ABC Stephen Portnoy says Democrats accuse her of violating Justice Department norms when mentioned when mentioning the president's health in his report. Voters in Georgia, Hawaii, Mississippi, and Washington all go to the polls today. After tonight's primary results, it is expected that both President Biden and former President Trump will have enough delegates to officially be named their party's nominees. First look traffic now on the 7 o'clock report, and here is Andy Farnsworth. And traffic is still okay on I-15. Gets a bit thick between 21st and 13th South heading into downtown Salt Lake, but... Nothing into Parley's or Weber Canyons to slow you down. Still have that little bit of slowing mouth of Spanish Fork Canyon from that earlier crash. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Salt Lake Airport officials are trying to find a permanent fix after groundwater started leaking into the Salt Lake Airport tunnel yesterday. That already maddening trek between gates A and B got flooded Monday afternoon when airport officials say a water leak forced the detour of airline passengers and personnel. A utility corridor opened up as an alternate as workers mopped up the mess. It was pretty surprising to see that much water just coming out of the ground in the tunnel there. Passenger Kevin Munro telling KSL 5 he was worried that he might miss his flight, but that he worked his way along with the other passengers the back way and made it on time. Airport spokesperson Nancy Vollmer says they initiated a bus bridge to transport passengers, require special assistance, and a temporary fix stop the water leak. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. Teenagers say they feel better after taking a break from their cell phones. 
But at the same time, good luck trying to get them to give up those phones. Nearly three quarters of U.S. teens say they feel happy or peaceful when they don't have their phones. That's according to a new report from the Pew Research Center. The survey also found that despite the positive associations with going phone free, most teens have not limited their phone or social media use. The report comes as policymakers and children's advocates are growing increasingly concerned with teens' relationships with their phones and social media. Most teens said the benefits of having a smartphone outweigh the harms for people their age. I'm Shelley Adler. More trouble for Boeing. ABC's Lionel Moise has the latest. The New York Times reports the company has failed 33 of the 89 audits the FAA conducted after a door panel blew off in mid-flight. Investigators later found four bolts were missing. The FAA also conducted 13 audits of Boeing supplier Spirit Aerosystems. Seven reportedly resulted in a failing grade. Boeing responded to the Times report saying in part, quote, we are squarely focused on taking significant demonstrated actions action with transparency at every turn. Cars made by General Motors with OnStar may be sharing data about your driving habits. ABC's Derek Dennis has more. Nationwide auto insurance rates are up 26 percent this year, rising six times faster than overall inflation. The increase is blamed on several factors, including the rising cost of car repairs. But now you can add another factor, the possibility of insurance companies tracking how you drive. GM confirmed to the New York Times the company shares insights with LexisNexis and other data brokers, but only if customers opt in to the program. Sandy police say they've been stopping speeders going as fast as 67 miles an hour on streets in front of a school. KSL TV's Andrew Adams is following that story. Afternoon traffic past Alta High School is always a little chaotic. Recently, Sandy police say the zooming has gotten a little out of control. I know that there were three tickets that were written, one at 58, uh, I believe one at 67, and another one at 65. Two of the tickets were handed to high schoolers. One crossing guard says the near misses have gotten really concerning, and police are trying to crack down on the problem. KSL News Time 709, traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines. Brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Back to you, Andy. And right now, travelers on I-15 in Salt Lake County are uh, having a good northbound drive till you get to downtown, and then it's really heavy just before you get to 6 South exit downtown. Uh, it's been pretty nice on I-80 out of Tooele this morning. SR-36 seeing a little bit of waiting, though, at the intersection at uh, SR-138 in Stansbury Park. bangeter has got some backups around 3,500 south. And in Davis County, uh, the gates to Hill Air Force Base, Roy and the Westgate in particular, are getting a little bit busy right now. Eric? A little bit of westbound slowing on I-80 going up over the top of Parley Summit. Uh, no major issues, though, through the mountains. You do have dry roads for the most part. If you're on 189 through Provo Canyon, that's also in good shape. And we did have a crash, and uh, we, it looks like we still do have some slowing out in Spanish Fork Canyon. Just about a mile into your drive if you're on Highway 6 and heading into Spanish Fork Canyon. We had a crash out there, and it has been windy out there this morning, too. And it uh, looks like the crash has been cleared, although we are still registering registering some uh, slowdowns going through there. I-15 from Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain, that's in great shape in Utah County. Beatty, Nevada, your adventure home base for any season. Gateway to Death Valley National Park, Canyon, and Desert Trails. Perfect for off-road hiking and biking, ghost towns, mines, and more. BeattyNevada.org. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL hourly forecast starting out on the mild side with cloud cover at 7 a.m. Temperature will be around 43 End of the lunch hour. Looks like showers increasing. We'll keep the temperature in the mid-40s. By this afternoon, topping out at 49. But more rain showers, maybe even some rumbles of thunder this evening. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, downtown 46 degrees. When that rain changes to snow, will we see any snow in the valley? Matt's going to stop by and uh, join us. We'll talk to him live coming up in just a moment. Weber State men's basketball has been knocked out of the Big Sky Tournament. The Wildcats had the lead at halftime, but Montana State put up 66 points in the second half to pull away. Montana State advances to the tournament semifinals. Both BYU and Utah State's men's basketball teams made the final AP Top 25 poll. The Cougars stayed at number 20 in the nation, while the Aggies jumped up to number 18. The Utah women's team also ended the regular season ranked, sitting at number 20 in the country.
There will be more jazz greats at the Delta Center for tonight's game against the Boston Celtics. The Jazz are hosting their final decade night of the season, remembering the top players of the 2010s. Al Jefferson, Trevor Booker, and Ronnie Price will be in the house tonight. The Iditarod Sled Dog Race is underway in Alaska. But it's not without controversy. Two dogs died over the weekend during Alaska's annual Iditarod sled dog race. Both dogs, a two-year-old male named Bog and a four-year-old male named George, collapsed. They were on separate teams. Further tests will be done to determine why they died. Their mushers, Isaac Tieford and Hunter Keith, both voluntarily quit the race. The last dog to die during the 1,000-mile race was in 2019. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals has been a long critic of the Iditarod and is calling for the race to end. Senior Vice President Colleen O'Brien says dogs are forced to run until their bodies break down. Also, the human winner can get a trophy while the dogs get an icy grave. And all five of the 38 mushers have left the race. A winner is expected by the middle of the week in Nome. I'm Ed Donahue. The latest human space mission has ended successfully. 199 days after they lifted off. Dragon down. Four crew members, one each from Japan, Denmark, Russia, and the United States, have dropped gently into the Gulf of Mexico to await the recovery boats. During 3,184 orbits and 84 million miles, the team, led by Marine Combat Helicopter Pilot Jasmine Mogbelli, completed a long slate of experiments aboard the International Space Station. Dragon SpaceX, on behalf of all of SpaceX, welcome home. Jim Ryan, ABC News. Trending this hour on the 7 o'clock report, a busy Southern California highway got TP'd by accident. Hundreds of rolls of toilet paper fell out of a Ford F-350 truck bed covering the roads. California Highway Patrol officers got the short end of the stick and <laughs> had to clean it up. Sorry about that. All right, one musical icon will be covering another musical I icon. Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Dolly Parton says she thinks Beyonce has recorded a cover of her iconic song, Jolene, and it will most likely be on her country album, Renaissance Act Two. We do have some breaking news this morning to cover on KSL News Radio. We just learned a Boeing whistleblower has died. The former employee raised concerns over safety and quality control within the company. He was found in his South Carolina home. Police say it appears he died by suicide. John Barnett was 62 years old. We'll follow that story and I'll let you know if we find out any other details. KSL News time now is 714. The three things you need to know this hour first. We've already hit the average for water in this year's snowpack and more snow is on its way. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, North Ogden police are asking everyone to keep an eye out after a reported attempted kidnapping of a nine-year-old. Third, traffic and weather together. I-15 traffic has uh, been holding up well this morning. Closest thing to a delay has been heavy traffic in downtown Salt Lake City. Otherwise, once you're there, you're fine. It's the city streets that are filling in a lot, including in Lehigh, trying to get to the freeway and through West Valley on your major Bangor Mountain View corridor. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today, high of 49. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now it's 46 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for our top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. About an hour from now, the House Judiciary Committee will hear from Special Counsel Robert Herr, who investigated President Biden's handling of classified materials. From Washington, here's ABC National Correspondent Stephen Portnoy. Biden aides and allies say Robert Herr's report was filled with gratuitous references to the president's poor memory. But Herr's prepared testimony has him defending his findings as accurate and fair, saying he couldn't determine whether the president willfully retained classified material without assessing his state of mind. Herr will say the president couldn't remember finding any classified papers at his home and didn't remember once telling his ghostwriter that he'd, quote, just found all the classified stuff downstairs. There's a classified briefing today for members of Congress considering banning TikTok unless the Chinese company ByteDance gives up ownership of it. Ophelia Nichols has 12 million TikTok followers. She says banning it would be a disservice. There are people that just like to watch me on the front porch and have picnics in my front yard. It, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's a lot to other people. The Commerce Department says prices rose at an annual rate of 3.2% in February, just a bit higher than the 
3.1% annual rate in January. The numbers, something that the Fed watches closely when setting interest rates. The New York Times is reporting that of the 13 audits the FAA conducted following the door plug blowout in Boeing in January, its supplier, Spirit Aero Systems, failed seven of them. The Times say documents show the FAA observed mechanics at Spirit using a hotel key card to check a door seal and applied Dawn soap to a door seal as lubricant. Boeing responding overnight saying, we continue to implement immediate changes and develop a comprehensive action plan to strengthen safety and quality with transparency at every turn. ABC's Trevor Ault with armed gangs roving his country. Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry has announced that he is resigning. You're listening to ABC News. So I've had a few reports from texters, Matt. Uh, by the way, um, KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson joins me. A few texters have let me know that they're already seeing some rain in their areas, okay. like Cottonwood Heights and Midvale. I heard from West Jordan this morning. So a little bit of rain already, right? Yep, that's uh, exactly what we're expecting. Uh, and these rain showers should increase through the day. Uh, then we'll see it kind of turn into a rain-snow mix, but more showery tomorrow. Uh, you know, we could see a quarter to a half inch of water with this mm. uh, in the valley. So so that's good, and it's all snow uh, up in the mountaintops. So a good little storm. Will we see? Will it actually be snow here in the valley tonight? I think uh, I think we could see some. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say how much is going to accumulate because that freezing line is going to hover right above the valley floor. Uh, so it could be a wet snow or a rain-snow mix. Again, that wouldn't be until uh, late tonight into tomorrow morning and it, it'll be it'll be hit and miss showers we had some reports this morning of wind but we're going to get more intense winds is it tomorrow night yeah it looks like as we work into thursday and friday so thursday morning friday morning uh, both could see some east winds so if you live northern salt lake valley into cache valley that that window of area uh, northern wasatch front could see some east winds as we work thursday friday and I, I saw, is it uh, like up to 60 miles an hour? It's a, it's a wind watch, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Out of the east, this could turn into a downsloping east wind event. So we got to watch it. Hmm. So uh, after this storm moves out, it looks like, I know we'll do a, a, a deep dive on the seven day in a second, but it looks like we're moving into some real clear temperatures. Do you see any more storms on the horizon, Matt? Uh, you know, out towards, way out towards the 21st of March. Uh, but the good news is, like you said, the nice weather moves in for the weekend. So we're, we'll, we'll take it. We'll, we'll keep this timing. Nice weekends, stormy, you know, first half of the week. Uh, we like that. I know that long-term forecasts are always, you know, subject to change. But do you think we've seen the last of or near the last of our snow in the valley yet? You know, it kind of feels that way. Um, I know our average last snowfall is sometime in the first or second week of April. Oh, okay. Um, so we're still within that that window of our of our average last snowfall. So we can't count it out just yet. But the way things are trending. You know, we might, uh, of of the bigger valley snows, right, we may be kind of leaving that chance. All right. All right, let's take a, a closer look at the seven-day in just a second. Thank you, Matt. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And back to you, Andy. And right now, travel on I-15, still clear, Draper to Salt Lake. Uh, if you're going north, you got some heavy traffic in uh, West Valley on Bangor. It's also getting a lot busier along 5400 South in Taylorsville as you head especially east towards Redwood Road. Coming out of Tooele County, SR 36 has been in good shape this morning on the northbound side. You actually see more wait times at the southbound intersections going from Lake Point, Stansbury Park, and Erda. Davis County I-15 still clear, including in Ogden and Roy areas where sometimes we see busy traffic. But this morning it's done um, um, delay-free the whole morning through that stretch. Eric? Got a couple of crashes uh, up north, uh, one eastbound I-80. Uh, this is uh, going through Morgan. The other one uh, is in Weber County, uh, 4,000 south at 4,700 west. Down to Utah County, I-15 northbound, southbound looking good. And uh, on the in the Wasatch back, if you're a northbound from Heber City past Jordan L. Reservoir to Park City, that's uh, good on US-40. But uh, turning into, to go into Park City, we got usual delays on Kearns Boulevard for westbounders. Revere Health encourages you to to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. And the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Okay, Matt, back over to you. What's it look like? All right. Hey, going for a high of 49 today. We got two fronts. One comes in during the noon hour, some light rain showers. Then another one this evening that'll bring a punch of rain and maybe even some rumbles of thunder. Yes. 
Tomorrow, 42. Wednesday looks like a rain-snow mixed day, but it'll be scattered showers. Okay, now we're talking about east winds possible Thursday and Friday. Highs will be in the 50s, but because those east winds kick in, we'll stay dry. Weekend looks good. Saturday, Sunday, mid and upper 50s, sunny skies with high pressure. You get into Monday, though, notching a 61, a <laughs> little bit of spring. <gasps> I might not even need my jacket anymore with those kind of temperatures. Uh-huh. That's nice, Matt. Thank you. Yep. All right. Coming up in just a moment, we'll get another look at money news here on KSL. And I want to remind you, today, all eyes are on Oklahoma State taking on UCF. Who do you like there? Central Florida or Oklahoma State? Whoever wins that game will take on our Cougars tomorrow morning. This will be a really fun thing tomorrow morning. So employers, prepare to have some of your employees be a little distracted tomorrow because the tip-off is at 10.30 in the morning. BYU takes on the winner of that game at 10.30. But we do have extended pregame coverage. Mitch and Matt will be here at 9 o'clock sharp to begin the pregame coverage of this uh, first year for BYU in the Big 12 tournament. Exciting, exciting action. And tomorrow's extended pregame is brought to you by Ryan Valuation, formerly Economic Partners. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, American healthcare spending reached $4.5 trillion in 2022. As businesses, individuals, and households navigate rising healthcare expenses, a shift towards proactive health strategies is crucial. Julie Wild, founder of Transform with Wellness, joins us with more. Did you know that 90% of health outcomes are determined by modifiable behaviors and choices of diet, lifestyle, and environment? It's time to take action to improve your health for a better quality of life regardless of your health status and experience the power of elevated well-being as a results-driven health coach with a corporate background i'm passionate about empowering professional women on the journey to their best selves from stress management to feeling and looking their best i specialize in helping women with personalized health transformation programs workplace wellness initiatives and engaging speaking events Discover possibilities and solutions for upgrading your health and supporting your employees' well-being. Whether you're seeking personal breakthroughs or looking for innovative ways to enhance workplace health, Transform with Wellness is here for you. Why wait? Reach out to me at julie at transformwithwellness.com or visit our website at transformwithwellness.com to get started today. Transform with Wellness's mission is to empower people to transform their lives by optimizing their health with a strong foundation of wellness. Visit their website to learn more. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber, speaking on business. I lock up my Old Spice Fiji Aluminum Free Dry Spray to keep that 24-7 lasting freshness safe for myself. Fresh coconuts, palm trees in the wind. It's like catching waves in Fiji. Actually, I just talked myself into a refreshing spritz of Fiji. My Old Spice is missing! No! Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Tyson Foods is closing a pork plant in Iowa, laying off 1,200 workers. Pork sales dropped $70 million in the last year. It's the latest closure from the manufacturer. Tyson closed six chicken plants in the past year. Lego is making more money than ever. Boy, why am I not surprised? The toy company's sales grew 2% last year, despite the global toy industry sales slipping 7%. Many toy companies are struggling to get their groove back post-pandemic, but not Lego. They were one of the few that saw massive growth during the lockdown. KSL Drives now Ford will spend $365 million to resolve allegations that the company violated federal tax laws by misclassifying and understating the value of imported cars. The Justice Department says Ford used these tactics from 2009 to 2013 on cargo vans from Turkey. All right. 
Let's uh, look at your money at this moment. We're just about five minutes away from the opening bell, and the futures are up slightly. Dow futures up 26. That's less than a tenth of a percent. S&P futures up 13, which is a quarter percent. The Nasdaq futures up 67, which is four tenths percent. Crude oil is down 52 cents. We're at $77.40 a barrel. I guess we're starting to see a couple of crashes out there. Northbound I-15 in Payson, we've got a crash. Eastbound I-80 in Morgan. We've got a crash. We'll check both of those and the rest of your commute just ahead. Are you thinking about buying a new home? Maybe you're thinking about selling your home as well. I know this can be a, a stressful experience, you know, because this is, in most of our cases, your home is your is your largest investment, and you want to make sure that you trust the selling of your home to the most experienced real estate agents who can get you top dollar for your home. And I want to tell you that that team is the Stern team. I just worked with Cami at the Stern team, and I could rave about her for the next hour. But I was also reading about, see, so many people have these experiences. They, and at the Stern team, they really work to help you in your specific situation. Like there was a couple, Sasha and Noel, and they wanted to sell their home in West Jordan out near me. And they found the Stern team. And they got their home sold. But here's what was unique in their situation. Both the buyer and the seller were veterans. So because the sellers had a VA loan and the buyer was also a veteran, Emily from the Sturm team helped them facilitate a loan assumption for the new buyers. They're going to save you money in ways you would never think to even ask for because that's how good they are. So do you need an instant cash offer? They can do that at the Stern team. Do you need a buy before you sell program? Do you need flexible fees? What do you need? If you go to sternteam.com right now, you can click on where it says sell and just type in your address and just get a ballpark for what your your house would sell for right now. That'll, that'll give you a good place to start. But I highly recommend this fantastic team of people who will go the extra mile to make sure you get the very most for your investment and help you find whatever your next dream home is, whether that's larger or downsizing. Sternteam.com or just Google the Stern Team. Are you using the KSL News Radio app to listen to your favorite shows whenever you want? Whenever you want, you can podcast Utah's Morning News even after it's finished at nine. You can listen to David Nijanovic or Boyd Matheson. Just click on the podcast tab. Podcast tab, and you can stream Jeff Kaplan live between three and seven right from the player. All of those shows, plus the KSL Greenhouse and Cougar Sports Saturday, they're on the app for KSL News Radio. KSL News Radio. 729 traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Andy? Amanda, we've got some delays suddenly appearing on the 21st South Freeway. Eastbound is going from Redwood over towards 900 West. We may have a crash. I haven't seen one yet, but something's creating a slowdown that we wouldn't normally have in that stretch. Uh, it's also getting a bit heavy in spots on northbound 15, especially coming up on 106 South and then another stretch uh, just downtown uh, around uh, 6 South itself. Uh, Davis and Weber County, I-15, still clear, but pretty heavy on Highway 89 going up the hill. Uh, as you get to the top of the hill, if you're going to split off and go to Weber State. Eric? Got some crashes over on the right shoulder and pace on northbound I-15. Yeah, they crashed into each other, and but no, so far no delays going in, uh, going through that area. In fact, from Santa Quinn to Point of the Mountain, it's a 30-minute uh, drive, although it is slowing down just a touch uh, between Tempanogos Highway and Point of the Mountain, so we may have an accident there. Redwood Road looking good if you're northbound out of Saratoga Springs this morning, heading up to Bluffdale and Riverton. Utah's largest sportsman's expo for the entire family is back March 21st through the 24th at the Mountain America Expo Center. More info at sportsexpos.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Yes, we've got rain in the forecast for today pretty much all over the place. And then tonight we'll have some scattered rain and rain turning to snow. We might even see a little bit of rain turning to snow down here in the valley. And that will continue into tomorrow morning. Today's high 49 degrees, 42 for a high tomorrow. But then we start this warming trend when the winds move in. So Matt tells us that we'll get some strong winds, canyon winds along the northern Wasatch Front Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And we start to warm up into the 50s, then mid 50s, then by Monday of next week, 61 degrees. Right now, it's 46 downtown. You're
listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 7:30. Tim has the day off. Our top story this hour tonight is the first public meeting about potential changes to the Alpine School District. Some of the suggestions would split the district in half. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage: the future of Utah schools. Adam. Amanda, Alpine hired Florida-based MGT Consulting to study possible ways they can accommodate all the new students continuing to move into what's already the state's largest school district. And they came up with six options, which range from keeping the district together to splitting Alpine into two, potentially even three separate school districts. Tonight is the first chance for people to comment on those proposals. The meeting will be at 7 o'clock in the Timpanogos High School Auditorium. They will also have meetings held tomorrow and Thursday at different schools. Now, several steps are required to create a new school district, including public hearings and elections. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr has those details. The process of creating a new school district can begin in one of three ways, either with a citizen's initiative petition at the request of a local school board or through a request from a city within the boundaries of the school district. The petitions and requests then have to go through county clerks, an advisory board, feasibility studies, public meetings, county elections, and receive the lieutenant governor's approval before a school district can be created. Alessandra Gurr, KSL News Radio. That's interesting. And I know that there are other school districts that are also dealing with a lot of growth, Adam, aren't there? Yeah, Amanda, there's actually several growth uh, hotspots. Uh, KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera is following that part of the story. Even though Utah County holds the top spot in population growth, Nate Curry with the Wasatch Front Regional Council points out Salt Lake and Davis counties are their own hotspots for development. Southwest Salt Lake County, that's definitely experiencing a ton of growth. But also there's, you know, like the infill growth that's occurring. Uh, and, and you look at places like, you know, downtown Salt Lake City with all of the new housing that's being built there or around Farmington Station, for example. Curry said with different types of growth occurring, that gives Utahns choices of where they want to live and choose the lifestyle that suits their situation. But as our landscape evolves, let's hope our strategy for schools can keep up. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. The Biden campaign rushed to post a campaign ad last night condemning former President Trump's comments on Social Security. CNBC asking former President Trump if he's changed his earlier comments about protecting Social Security or Medicaid. First of all, there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting. The Biden campaign immediately firing back with a quote from his State of the Union address. If anyone here tries to cut Social Security or Medicare or raise the retirement age, I will stop you. No word whether Mr. Trump would go through with those cuts. Andy Field, ABC News. Congress is taking more steps to get the TikTok app away from Chinese control. ABC's M. Wynn reports from Washington. Members of Congress are preparing to receive a classified briefing from U.S. intelligence agencies on the security threat posed by TikTok. It comes ahead of a House vote on a bill that would require TikTok's Chinese parent company to sell its U.S. operations to an American company or be banned from the U.S. The bill is expected to pass the House with bipartisan support. Its future in the Senate remains unclear. The vote will likely happen tomorrow morning. The Utah DWR is trying to track down the people who left a group of deer to waste. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Amanda, these were illegal kills, and whoever were the hunters took the bucks' heads and left the bodies. Wildlife resource officers say the deer were shot with rifles between October and November last year in Utah County near Woodland Hills. Now, one of them happened uh, near Woodland Hills near Payson, but we don't have all the information yet. We do know these are strange cases, but they're a drop in the bucket of total illegal wildlife kills every year. In 2023, for instance, more than 1,000 wild animals and fish were illegally hunted, and those are worth over $600,000 according to the DWR. Now, if you've got more information that you'd like to share with the DWR or to find out more yourself, Check out kslnewsradio.com. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. First look traffic now on a Tuesday morning. And back to you, Andy. Amanda, travel on I-15 right now. has got some delays coming up uh, from Lehigh to Point of the Mountain. We've got a crash with vehicles on the right and left shoulder at the point itself. 
Some additional heavy traffic in Sandy. I never did see a crash on 201, but something's slowing you down between 215 and 900 West. And our first slowdown coming from Davis into Salt Lake City this morning. Pretty busy right before or right after 600 North on South 15. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. More people are questioning the safety of the Mountain View Corridor after two fatal crashes at the same intersection in less than a month. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson has more. Three people died Friday night at the intersection of the Mountain View Corridor and 3500 South, and two people died on February 21st at the same intersection. In both cases, initial reports show the drivers ran a red light. Anytime there's a serious or fatal crash, we're going to take a very close look to see if there's anything that we can do from an engineering standpoint to, to improve safety. But at the same time, we need people to follow the rules of the road. John Gleason, a spokesman for UDOT, says in recent years they've added more time between phases, so the lights pause a little longer before turning green. They've also added more advanced red light warning signals along Mountain View Corridor. Heather Peterson, KSL News Radio. Haiti's prime minister has resigned following a series of unified gang attacks that took over government buildings and the airport. ABC's Matt Rivers says the gang leaders got what they wanted. Henri, for a while, did not resign, and it led to a lot of speculation that he wasn't going to resign. People were watching what was going on. International pressure was building. Clearly, the demand from the gangs was that Henri needed to resign, and yet he held out until last night when it was announced that Henri had finally decided to resign. Haiti's prime minister has been in office since 2021, since the assassination of their previous prime minister. 30 million Americans are facing prescription shortages, and Utah is one of the states struggling the most. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit has more. Michael? Amanda, our state comes second on the list with the highest medication shortage, with nearly 400,000 Utahns unable to fill their prescription, with a particular shortage for meds that treat asthma, ADHD, and shingles. And prescriptions aren't the only ones. Pharmacies across the nation are struggling to keep the shelves stocked. The FDA is taking some steps here, including working with international companies to divert products to the U.S., and they're also speeding up the process for authorizing new production facilities. We'll see how that goes from there. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. We do have some northbound delays heading on I-15 from the Timpanogos Highway exit up to Point of the Mountain, thanks to a crash there. We'll check that and the rest of your commute just ahead. A legacy of news and information going back generations. I'll have the radio on. I learned that from my mom. She's listened to KSL her whole life, and I grew up listening to KSL radio, too. I really enjoy listening in the morning. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and I'm proud to tell you we don't lay off employees when things get tough. During the pandemic, we didn't let one of our installers go. Instead, we had them clean and remodel our offices so they could still get paid. Remember the 2008 housing crisis? It was a financial nightmare for even the biggest contractors. Still, we didn't lay off a single worker. Nope, we sacrificed profits to keep paying everyone. Look, when the economy's down, most contractors are quick to lay off their workers. It's the easiest way to save money when times get tight. But at RGS Exteriors, we're loyal to our people. You know why? Because it's the right thing to do. People first, people always. That's the RGS way. For gutter, siding, windows, and more, call RGS Exteriors at 801-280-3110 or visit rgsexteriors.com. That's rgsexteriors.com, 801-280-3110. Are you tired of yo-yo dieting? Are you thinking about trying the latest fad prescription drug with their long list of possible serious side effects? Most people don't realize that while you may lose weight, it's just temporarily suppressing your hunger so as soon as you get off the drug, your frustration and your weight could come right back to haunt you. At slcfatloss.com, we know the secret to quick weight loss and most importantly, safe and lasting weight loss. Our program has helped over 40,000 clients across the country break the weight loss code. Gone are the starvation diet. Diet plans. Our program is healthy weight loss, using real whole foods and proprietary strategies to help guide our clients through their successful weight loss with a roadmap to keep the weight off long term. This is Maria Shaleos. Salt Lake City Fat Loss has taken the frustration out of dieting because with their simple eating plan, the weight drops off so quickly. I've lost more than 20 pounds in five weeks, naturally and safely. Schedule your free consultation in person or virtually 801-450-1882 or slcfatloss.com. Results may Tonight is the first public meeting 
about potential changes to the Alpine School District. Do you live in that district? Are you concerned about what they're going to do? They have six different options on the table, and tonight is the first chance for you to speak out about that. There will be another public meeting tomorrow night and then a third one on Thursday, and we're covering it for you here. The Future of Utah Schools on KSL News Radio. 739 now, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Andy? Amanda, travel in Salt Lake County, uh, running slow between 123rd and 106th South, and some additional delay creeping in now on the northbound side after 33rd South. Heavy traffic's turning to stop and go on South 15 between Warm Springs Road, and uh, there's something a little bit past 600 North causing that delay. 201 freeway, heavy traffic starts at Bangor and goes to Redwood, and there's some slowing coming off 215 onto the 201 uh, on that ramp near Redwood Road to deal with as well. Eric? Got a couple of crashes in Lehigh approaching point of the mountain. One is right before Tempanogos Highway. This is over on the left shoulder, and um, and then the other one is further up the line, but also up against the left barrier. Don't be surprised if all of this congeals into one long delay. Uh, right now, you do have slowdown starting at 2100 North if you're northbound through Utah County. But the rest of the way looks good. Uh, Redwood Road, though, is also busy approaching 2100 North and even past that heading up to Camp Williams. I-80 through Parley's Canyon looking okay right now. No difficulty going out to the Kimball Junction exit to Park City. Spring is here and new deals are blooming at Murdoch Hyundai. Pick your new car at the spring sales event. Receive 0% for three years on the Tucson or lease a new Elantra for only $199. Eric Butler in KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today with a high of 49. Overnight will drop off to 33. Tomorrow, 42. Rain, snow, showers possible. Then some east winds on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now it's 46 degrees downtown. Have you noticed more fake, counterfeit products on the market, seen them on social media sites. There are more. And Jim Ryan's going to give us an update coming up on KSL, streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news traffic and weather station. Time now for Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. So this is how they take over. Look, you've been hearing about artificial intelligence. Maybe you've used ChatGPT to write a business plan, maybe design a logo or do your homework. But the flip side is the risk that AI could become smart enough to take over the world. And I know you don't quite believe it yet because AI has no physical body. It's a bunch of computer chips, neat stacks of servers, and the hum of electricity. Some worry when it gets smart enough, it could hack into your car's computer and make your brakes malfunction. Maybe it could threaten to empty your bank account unless you do some evil act. But since it has no body, most of us don't think of it as an immediate threat. Kids learn to fear the boogeyman, not the boogie algorithm. But this is changing because Axios reports the big tech companies are spending a ton on humanoids. R2-D2 is out. C-3PO is in. Nobody worries about upsetting a droid. They're creating the kind of android with two arms, two feet, hands that work, and instead of a noggin, AI. Rattling around up there, for instance, Amazon has invented Digit, a metallic creature with limbs, joints, pecs, and blinking digital eyeballs. It looks less like the Tin Man. When a man's an empty kettle. And more like Terminator. I'll be back. If Amazon's Digit was coming at you, you'd be worried. Like a dog chased by a Roomba. You ever see that? They freak. And someday soon the dog could be us. Running not from a Roomba, but from Rosie, the maid on the Jetsons. Meet George the Jetson. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. Oh, we dated ourselves there, Jeff. Yeah, I remember the Jetsons. I love that show. Uh, and Jeff's Minute of News is brought to you by the Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox. IRS harassing you, the Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox can help. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. Hi, I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. When the IRS invades your life, it's never good news. It's not just you. My husband passed away. He had been ill for quite some time. And um, he did the taxes, but he forgot to send them in. He never sent the forms in. And this was the beginning of my nightmare. Don't face the IRS alone. With everything in your life at stake, don't trust just anyone. I got all these letters from the IRS telling me I owed them $63,000. I had a good friend that she said, you need an attorney. She said, call Jordan Wilcox. You need someone to fight for you. He said, Cynthia, we're going to give him $3,000. How does that sound? I started crying because I was overwhelmed. Visit TaxHelpUT.com and get relief today. 
Let's solve your tax problems now. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. You have it made in the shade with Jordan Wilcox. That's TaxHelpUT.com. KSL News Time, 745. The three things you need to know this hour first. Salt Lake City renters can now make complaints about housing issues and scams online. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second tonight is the first public meeting about potential changes to the Alpine School District, which could lead to a district split. Third, traffic and weather together. Got a couple of crashes on I-15 in Lehigh, both on the left shoulder. One's uh, near SR-92, the other's up at Point of the Mountain. Between the two, you've got slowdowns. Uh, trying to get out of Utah County, then additional slowdowns in Sandy, South Salt Lake. It looks like they may have cleared a crash on South 15 just after 600 North downtown that's been backing you into North Salt Lake. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Wet weather back in the forecast and even some wind. I'm Matt Johnson. 46 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for our top national story. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. This morning on Capitol Hill, Special Counsel Robert Hur is set to testify. He is the DOJ official who described President Biden as a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory when determining Biden broke no laws in keeping classified materials at his home in Delaware. TikTok is asking its 170 million users to contact their representatives, resisting calls for the platform to be banned over security fears unless its Chinese owners divest. Several content creators are in Washington and, says ABC, senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott. We are learning that the CEO of TikTok is also here in Washington today trying to set up meetings with senators here on Capitol Hill who appear much more on the fence than many of the lawmakers over in the House. But the president says he would sign this bill if it's passed. Consumer prices in the U.S. picked up last month, a sign that inflation remains a persistent challenge. Prices rising 3.2 percent in February from 3.1 percent in January. This is ABC News. Let's go in depth now. Fake and counterfeit products are flooding online marketplaces. ABC News correspondent Jim Ryan joins me live. What does this look like, Jim? Well, it looks like a fake. I mean, it's, it's sometimes hard to spot in in flea markets and in you know backroom stores. You probably could see the differences between a fake and the real thing. Some people buy them just because they're cheaper. They know that it's not a real coach bag, for example, or Nike shoes. They just know that these are cheaper and they're going to wear them. Uh, that's it. But knowingly buying counterfeits that are that purport to be the real thing if it has the coach bag badge on it or these nike it has the swoosh on it and they're trying to pass themselves off as the fake thing and you buy that on purpose that can be against the law you gotta watch it but there's a pro- proliferation of these things and part of it has to do with all the online shopping that's going on right now amanda people simply buy more stuff online Customs and Border Protection in 2019 seized $1.5 billion worth of fake goods at U.S. ports. Just three years later, that number had doubled to nearly $3 billion, and it's only going to get worse as more of these products flood the market, more people buy them. Where are they coming from? China. Uh, a lot of them, the, the legitimate stuff we buy comes from China. Check any label of any product and you'll see that it comes from China. And that's also the source of a lot of the fake goods as well. Everything from uh, fake uh, luxury goods, luxury handbags, to clothing, to shoes, to just about everything. And right now, and I was interested in this yesterday, talking with an ophthalmologist about the eclipse that's coming up, right? And people are scrambling to, to buy eyewear that they can put on and you know that it's approved and it's going to be safe you can't just use regular sunglasses you have to buy some special glasses to look at the eclipse a lot of the ones that are being sold online are not real they're not legitimate they're not real eclipse protection so if you wear these things and you try to look at the eclipse next april or next month you could find yourself in real trouble with eye with vision problems you know what pops into my mind jim is that that ad for that uh, app during the Super Bowl is it Timu or Temu? Yeah, which sells things for such little money that I wonder, are those legit? Well, I've ordered things from Timu before and had trouble and problems with it. Really, didn't get what was ordered. The, the, the stuff that came, you know, was clearly uh, there was a problem with a lot of that stuff. Timu, Timu was one place. Um, Amazon, you know, the third-party sellers on a lot of these sites, they're not necessarily checked out. Amazon does it be- its best to keep up with this stuff to make sure that the third-party sellers are selling the real deal. I mean, at least the thing that they're purporting to sell. But there are so many online marketplaces anymore. I mean, think, I think you're onto something there that uh, some of these places may or may not be selling legitimate products. Hmm. 
So if it sounds too good to be true, yeah. it probably is. Thank you, Jim. Right. Uh, ABC News correspondent Jim Ryan with me on the In-Depth at 15 and 45. Let's get a look now at 749 at Traffic and Weather Together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And back to you, Andy. Amanda, travel backed up on I-15. Now coming over uh, the point of the mountain, you've got some slowdowns between Draper and Sandy, and then additional slowdowns increasing now from 4500 south towards the I-80 turnoff. Both Mountain View and Bangor are seeing slowdowns at the intersections all through West Valley. It's very busy on both of those roads. SR-201 moving consistently but pretty heavy from 56 west over to the west belt. And then they cleared a crash. It looks like downtown Salt Lake around uh, 400 north. But traffic is slow all the way back to the 215 split in north Salt Lake. And the delays are increasing now on south 15 from Riverdale into Roy. Eric? We got some slowdowns northbound I-15 Utah County from Triumph Boulevard heading up to a point of the mountain. Got a couple of crashes there. Uh, one is uh, on the left uh, right before Timpanogos Highway, and then the other one is at point of the mountain. And uh, that's it as far as delays in Utah County on the freeway. Uh, we got some wet roads out in Parley's Canyon now, and you've got eastbound slowdowns from Lambs Canyon heading up to the top of Parley Summit. Uh, once you get past that, you do have some slowdowns getting into Park City itself uh, westbound from US-40 on Kearns Boulevard. Call 801-288-ZERO and get Celebrate Utah's Cleaning Week. One room clean starting at just $25 with a four room minimum and 25% off all other services. Use promo code CLEANWEEK, zero res. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Seven day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive. Beautiful. I just looked up at the camera of Parley's Canyon, Matt. Look at that. There's snow up there. Yep, here we go. Another storm moving in. It'll be valley rain, mountain snow today, high of 49. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers down to the valley floor possible, but not expecting much in the way of accumulation. Uh, Thursday and Friday get interesting uh, because we'll pick up on some east winds. Temps will top out in the 50s during the day, but again, east winds are possible Thursday, Friday along the northern Wasatch Front. Uh, Saturday, 55, high pressure building. Sunday, sunny skies, 58. Before you know it, we got another spring tease on Monday with a high of 61. So 58, 61 degrees, and right now I'm looking at snow. Yep. I love spring. It's wonderful. Thank you, Matt. Right now it's 46 degrees downtown, and we'll take a look at money news just ahead on KSL News Radio. At Intermountain Primary comes Children's in Hospital, many colors. You made a bold Whatever promise your color, to build bring a new Happy Place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at certapro.com. already feels like home. Any Hour Services can help unclog any drain in your house. Whether you have a backup, a clog, or a slow drain you want fixed, call Any Hour Services or visit anyhourservices.com. Travel back to the magical world of ancient China with Shen Yu and enjoy the incredible art of classical Chinese dance. Performances on March 20th and March 24th at Eccles Theater. Reserve your tickets today. At Intermountain Primary Children's Hospital, we made a bold promise to build the nation's model health system for children. Join us in realizing our vision for the future of pediatric care. So together, we can expand primary children's impact and ensure every child has access to the right care at the right place at the right time. For a century, Primary Children's has kept the child first and always. Help us continue to do so for the next 100 years. To get involved, visit primarypromise.org. At 34, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I finished up my treatments. I truly, truly feel like every day is a gift. I really want to give back, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to help with this study. Heretogene is an extraordinarily innovative research study wherein we are looking at the genes of hundreds of thousands of participants. The more information that we have, the more we can help others. You can help at heretogene.org. Helping people live the healthiest life possible. Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Dave and Eugenific. We continue to follow the possible breakup of the Alpine School District. But one thing to remember when you split up a school district, you've got to double up all the administrative costs. I'll tell you statewide how much we spend today on Dave and Eugenific. 
Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Ray-Ban's Meta Sunglasses can be your tour guide. The AI-powered glasses can now identify and describe landmarks. That might be a little unsettling. You're walking down the street. Uh, that is the Salt Lake Temple. Off to your... <gasps> Who's talking? It's still in beta, but Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg says it's very promising so far. The Body Shop is closing dozens of North American locations as the chain files for bankruptcy. The skincare and cosmetic store was founded in 1976, but sales are slowing. The bankruptcy was announced after poor holiday sales. Your money at this moment, and let's see, we are pretty flat in early trading. The Dow is up two points. We're at 38,772. The S&P is up nine. That's two-tenths percent. The Nasdaq up 27, which is also two-tenths percent. It's time for Cougar Tracks, and here is KSL Sports BYU insider Mitch Harper. BYU basketball arrived in Kansas City last night as they get set for their first appearance in the Big 12 Conference Tournament. The Cougars will tip off their run in KC tomorrow morning against Oklahoma State or UCF. Former BYU star Jake Toulson, who four years ago today saw his senior season cut short through the COVID-19 pandemic, he can't help but get excited for this team. I can't lie, I sit here and watch this year's team and see how well they play together and wish we could have ran some more of that action, those zooms, mm. those away screens, those pin downs, the dribble handoffs with playing with Ali and finding all the late cutters and wide open threes. Like, in my opinion, that's the greatest way to play basketball. BYU's second round game of the Big 12 tournament tips off tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. with extended pregame starting at 9 right here on KSL. With Cougar Tracks from Kansas City, I'm Mitch Harper on your legacy home of the BYU Cougars. KSL News Radio. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert. You may not have that kind of time for weatherization, energy efficiency, and appliance rebates, but we do. Dominion Energy's Thermwise program has experts who know where and how to save money. They help homeowners and businesses find simple ways to conserve natural gas and rebates through upgrades that may help to save even more. We put our energy into helping you conserve it so you can spend your 10,000 hours becoming an expert in what matters to you. Start with a home energy plan at thermwise.com. News is brought to you by Dominion Energy's Thermwise program. Their experts help you save money. Start now at thermwise.com. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's, it's perfect. perfect. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment. And Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56-volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 4-3 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. The time has finally come. Saturday, March 16th, at America First Field for the return of royalty. The Utah Royals are back. Be there as head coach Amy Rodriguez, Kate Delfava, Manny Bogart, and more set out to reclaim the Utah Royals legacy. Tickets are available now. Visit utahroyals.com or call 844-REAL-TIX to reserve your seats. The return of royalty. The Utah Royals home opener. Saturday, March 16th. Be more than a fan. Be part of a new era. Traffic and weather together at 759. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. And right now, if you're on I-15, the drive has uh, got some slow spots coming south from Ogden to Riverdale, although it's a little bit better than it was uh, 10 minutes ago. Still have some stop and go between the North 215 split and 600 North in Salt Lake City. Northbound side of things, backed up between Bangor and Bluffdale, and then you've got slowdowns scattered through Midvale and Murray, especially near 7200, 4500 South. And the 201 freeway, pretty sluggish between 5600 west and the 215 west belt. Eric? We got snow falling, maybe a rain-snow mix at the uh, top of Parley Summit, and so it's slow on the eastbound side from Lamps Canyon up to the uh, summit and a little bit through Jeremy Ranch, too, if you're heading uh, out to Kimball Junction this morning going to Park City. Down Utah County, I-15 is a pretty decent ride from Santa Quinn Payson all the way up through much of Lehigh, but at Timpanogos Highway, it's going to slow down. You had a couple of left-shoulder crashes uh, heading up to point of the 
mountain. Uh, one of them, the furthest one up uh, t- the line uh, right at the point. Uh, that one's got some tow trucks now there as part of the mix. Uh, we've got northbound slowing Redwood Road as you approach 2100 North and then go up towards Camp Williams. Common Spirit, hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advanced health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Healthcare with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Hello. All right, let's get a look at the weather forecast. It says rain. We've got rain today. Tonight, it might get cold enough for that rain to turn to snow down here in the valley. Definitely snow in the mountains. Today's high will be 49 degrees, 42 tomorrow. Then we start warming back up all the way to 61 by next Monday. Right now, it's 45 downtown. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning to you. KSL News Time is 8 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Amanda Dixon. Tim has the day off. KSL's top story this hour, more snow is on its way to the Wasatch Front, and that's just going to pile on to the already healthy snowpack. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage, March Storms. Adam? Amanda, in just the last few days, we've reached the average amount of water we typically see in a healthy snowpack. KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson says... So even if we didn't receive a snowflake moving forward, we could say we received an average snowfall for the season. Or in short, that means we've officially got two healthy water years in a row and more is coming. Valley rain and mountain snow kicking off already this morning. Already seeing some rain falling here where I'm at in the Salt Lake Valley. Um, That's going to continue into tomorrow with a chance of valley snow tomorrow morning. Matt is predicting, uh, at least on average around the mountains around the state, six inches to a foot of mountain snow, meaning we'll have a little more water to go around this spring. Live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Today's storm will have plenty of wind with mountain snow, which increases our avalanche danger. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kikuchi continues our team coverage, March Storms. The snow from today and tomorrow's storm will create conditions like those on Sunday when four human caused avalanches were triggered. The Utah Avalanche Center reports the avalanche conditions will be rated as low, but the winds create slabs that are shallow and still dangerous and tricky. Skiers and snowboarders are advised to avoid wind-blown areas with compacted snow that looks like concrete. Anyone venturing into the backcountry is advised to check the Avalanche Center's website for up-to-date conditions. A couple of bills aimed at helping renters failed to make it through the state legislature. Senator Todd Weiler supported a bill to help renters get evictions off their records. But he tells KSL TV there were other bills he had some issues with. There's a delicate balance right now in Utah law between renters and landlords. And I felt like that one was kind of maybe trying to alter that balance and give a little bit too much to renters. Another bill would have required landlords to disclose certain defects to potential tenants. Salt Lake City's push for affordable housing is pushing longtime homeowners into less affordable options. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live to explain. Peter? Amanda, Salt Lake already has a plan to prevent housing displacement. And step two of that plan is preserving the affordable housing that's already there. But the very effort to make more affordable apartments is pushing out West Side homeowners who say they can't afford a house anywhere else. Building Salt Lake reports that developers have come knocking and calling nearly every month on Chicago Street near North Temple to buy out the remaining historic residents there. Renters include construction workers who are helping build the units nearby, but their own properties are reportedly in talks to be demolished too. Residents tell Building Salt Lake that change has accelerated recently, and the city's zoning plans make it look like it will only speed up from here. Reporting live, Peter Johnston. KSL News Radio. Loneliness has been a major problem for young renters since the pandemic, but a new apartment complex in downtown Salt Lake is trying to remedy that. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with that story. Michael? Amanda, it's called the Salt Lake Crossing. I'm actually down at the construction site for the place right now. You see, basically, it's a co-living experience aimed at young adults. Now, residents have their private rooms and privies, but the rest of the complex is built to create connections and community. So we're talking communal spaces, shared kitchens, common living rooms, and other things that also connect to accessible luxury amenities. So the complex would also cater to short-term renters as well. But at the end of the day, the whole goal here is to build that community. Looks like the crossing will be opening its doors later on in April. Reporting live downtown, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. 
KSL's top national stories now. The special counsel who investigated President Biden's handling of classified documents will be questioned by the House Judiciary Committee today. For the first time, lawmakers will hear directly from Robert Hur about why he included references to the president's memory in his report. Hur wrote last month that Biden's handling of classified material shouldn't result in charges. He said in large part it's because a jury would find Biden to be a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory. ABC Stephen Portnoy says the president's aides have furiously pushed back on her assessment. In fact, I'm just looking up at the monitor, and that hearing looks like it's just about to begin. People are shuffling in, and the witness is standing right now to be sworn in. We'll follow it for you. First look, traffic now. Back over to you, Andy. Amanda, still have delays coming out of Davis County right now as you go uh, south between North Salt Lake and 600 North. We've still got northbound delays at uh, Bluffdale and Midvale. Foothill's getting pretty slow now. You've got some snow coming down over Parley Summit, wetting the roads down and slowing you in both directions of I-80. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Your car may be recording and sharing information about how you drive. ABC's Derek Dennis has more. The New York Times report that data clearinghouse LexisNexis is working with insurance companies and their collaboration could drive your insurance rates higher. GM's OnStar service has a smart driver feature which tracks driver habits as a way to improve safety. GM confirmed to the Times that it shares select insights with LexisNexis and another data broker but says the program is optional to customers and that drivers can unenroll at any time. Auto insurance rates are up 26% this year. That is six times faster than overall inflation. Salt Lake Airport officials are working on a fix this morning after groundwater started seeping into the tunnel connecting the A and B gates. That already long, long walk between gates A and B was flooded, causing airport workers to think fast, opening a utility channel on the side of the underground tunnel that normally ushers those passengers through concourses. Airport spokesperson Nancy Vollmer says the airport is built on a lake bed and digging through water has been a cornerstone of construction there. There's occasional issues that will we see a little bit of water leakage through the walls, so we always address that very quickly. We have never had a leak to this extent. They initiated a bus bridge to transport passengers who require special assistance. A temporary fix stopped the water leak. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. Police in Sandy are urging people to drive safely after they've seen an increase in speeding right in front of schools. KSL TV's Andrew Adams is following the story. Police don't want to see the bad road behavior continue, especially in the early morning hours with the time change to daylight savings. They hope drivers consider the realities. If you're doing 60 miles an hour within one second, you're traveling nearly 100 feet and you're not going to be able to stop. Police say they've been handing out speeding tickets to drivers in front of Alta High School, some drivers going nearly 70 miles an hour. We do have some northbound slowdowns on I-15 in several spots in Salt Lake County to go along with those northbound Foothill Drive slowdowns as well. We'll check that coming up. Traffic and weather together on KSL. Join your friends who rely on KSL each morning for the fastest routes to work and school. Uh, I like traffic on the nines. So I need to get the kids up earlier so that my son isn't driving quickly in a snowstorm. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines on KSL News Radio. I'm Jason Walton, candidate for U.S. Senate. I'm recording from the Tucson sector of our southern border, and nobody's here. Our government should defend our territory. But President Biden, Mitch McConnell, and career politicians are funding war in other countries while the cartels are waging unchecked war here on American soil. I'm standing up to build the wall, end catch and release, and secure the border. Stand with me. I'm Jason Walton, and I approve this message. Paid for by friends of Jason Walton for Senate. The KSL News Radio Movie Show comes to My Hearing Centers this Friday from 10 to 1. But first, discover what My Hearing Centers can do for you. My Hearing Centers uses advanced technology to diagnose and treat hearing loss. These comprehensive evaluations determine the best treatment options. Then enjoy lifetime support with regular check ins, cleaning, and maintenance. Call My Hearing Centers at 801 701 1629. 801 701 1629 for more details. My Hearing Centers has offices from Ogden to St. George. Gillette Heating and Air Conditioning is offering furnace maintenance for 30% off. Call 385-GET-HEAT today to take advantage of this limited time offer. Carrier, turn to the experts. AMCO presents Bet You Didn't Know. Bet you didn't know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, bet you didn't know that AMCO's fixed over 40 million transmissions and that AMCO offers a nationwide warranty. 
Check out Amco's multiple financing options so you can fix it fast and pay it off slow. That's Amco, double A, MCO. A fiduciary has the regulatory obligation to put your best interest first. Trajan Wealth is a financial fiduciary for your investments. With Trajan Wealth, the more you make, the more we make. Our interests are aligned. Most other financial advisors are brokers held to a lesser standard and are paid an upfront commission to sell you something. Call Trajan Wealth, 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. If you're just joining us this morning, we're following such an interesting story that designers of an apartment complex, a new apartment in Salt Lake, were thinking about the problem of youth loneliness. So they designed the apartment in such a way that everyone has their private bedrooms and bathrooms, but that there are shared common areas, shared kitchens. So there's more connection between the young people. I think that's just fascinating. We'll share more details with you this morning. Right now, let's get a look at traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, delays on I-15 have uh, kind of condensed around Bluffdale. Uh, some around 7200 South exit, uh, the 7200 South overpass in Midville. There's no exit off the main flow there. And then at 3300 South, 201 looking much better now through West Valley. If you're coming south out of Ogden, traffic's still a bit heavy near the I-84 split in Riverdale. And then you're at the full speed limit all the rest of the way down to North Salt Lake, where traffic is going to add a couple of extra minutes to your travel time uh, between the 215 split and 600 North. Eric? Foothill Drive from uh, 2100 South up to about 1300 South. That's going to be slow this morning if you're heading out into the mountains uh, we do have some slowing around uh, first of all uh, we have wet roads everywhere it seems like from uh, east canyon all the way up to the top of parley summit the delays right now are on the westbound side as you go from lambs canyon over to mountain dell down in utah county i-15 looks good uh, we did have a couple of crashes northbound approaching point of the mountain earlier but right now no delays going through that area the Serta mattress sale is happening now at Two Brothers Mattress. Get a Queen Serta mattress for $379. That's a Serta for $379. Visit one of their five stores or twobrothersmattress.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Slightly below normal in the temperature department today. High of 49 with a chance for showers through the day. Overnight dipping off to 33. Chance for showers overnight. 42 tomorrow. Rain, snow showers. Then it's 50, partly cloudy and windy on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, downtown, it is 45 degrees. I'm just reading this morning more about this former Boeing employee who was a whistleblower. His name is John Barnett. He was found dead at age 62 in his home after he blew the whistle on all kinds of safety problems at Boeing. The coroner there in Charleston, South Carolina, says it appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound, but they are investigating it. And we'll have more coming up on KSL, streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We are Utah's news, traffic and weather station. Believe it or not, it's time for spring cleaning. Beat the spring cleaning rush with big savings and priority booking today. You're not the only one who's tired of winter this year. Your carpets are too. With Zero Res's platinum rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water, they'll extract all that nasty out so your home will look and smell like a home should. With their no residue difference, it's what separates Zero Res from the competition. Just check out the 3,300 raving customer reviews online with a 4.8 Google rating and see what the hype is all about. Right now, get one room of carpet cleaning starting at just $25 with a four-room minimum. And also take 25% off all other services like air ducts, tile, upholstery, and rugs by using promo code CLEANWEEK to celebrate Utah's Cleaning Week. You owe it to yourself and your family to breathe healthy, happy, and clean. Call Zero Res right now, 801-288-9376. Or go online to ZeroRes.com and say you want the Clean Week special. Zero Res. Spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. 
For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. Derek Overstreet, founder of the New Millennium Group. We're a financial planning firm. Listen, we're fiduciaries. We have advisors standing by right now to take your call. That's 888-999-6370. 888-999-6370. The reason you're going to want to call is we're going to help you retire three to five years before you thought possible. Now, imagine how that would be if you could actually retire three to five years sooner than your plan was. The way we do this is by putting together a step-by-step plan, taking into consideration any rental properties that you have, any pension income that you have, your social security. Listen, we put that all together for you in writing. It will allow us to, to build your income based on inflation. You know, inflation has been rapidly rising. You and I both need a plan that whatever we start out our income at, in five or 10 years, we're going to need 40% more income. So if you're one of those people listening and you'd like a plan in writing, give us a call at 888-999-6370. That's 888-999-6370 or go to utahsfinancialplanner.com. KSL News Time 815. The three things you need to know this hour. First, more snow is on its way, expected to add to an already healthy statewide snowpack. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, a new apartment complex in Salt Lake was designed to help prevent loneliness among young renters. Third, traffic and weather together. Still have slow spots on I-15, including northbound at Bluffdale, some at 7200 South, and a really thick stretch of traffic right now from the 215 split to the Warm Springs Road turnoff near 2300 North. Those are the spots where you'll have to add some commute time if you're traveling through. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Rain chances through the day today, high of 49. I'm Matt Johnson. 45 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Time for our top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. This hour on Capitol Hill, special counsel Robert Herr, who has looked into classified documents found at President Biden's home, is testifying before the House Judiciary Committee. ABC News has reviewed a copy of the 250-page transcript of Herr's interview with the president last October. ABC White House correspondent Karen Travers has more on what it was said. President Biden's testimony to special counsel Robert Herr included detailed descriptions of events that happened many years prior. The image of the president that emerges from the transcript of the lengthy interview View, largely mirrors his public persona, at times steadfastly defensive, but in other moments jocular, conversational, and prone to lengthy tangents. At the beginning of the interview, the special counsel instructed the president to share his best recollections of events from the past, and the president quipped, quote, I'm a young man, so it's not a problem. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Elsewhere at the Capitol, members of Congress are being briefed about security threats facing the country. Tomorrow, there's a vote on whether the Chinese-owned video app TikTok should be banned over security. Security concerns. Following weeks of mounting pressure and increasing violence in Haiti, the prime minister there has agreed to resign. ABC's Tom Rivers has more from the foreign desk. Stranded in Puerto Rico after being prevented by armed gangs from returning home, Ariel Henry announced his resignation via a video address. It comes after regional leaders met in Jamaica to discuss the transition. Secretary of State Blinken says the U.S. will be providing more financial aid, but... All of us know that only the Haitian people can... Only the Haitian people should determine their own future. Meanwhile, gangs have tightened their grip and attacked the main prison, freeing thousands of inmates. Tom Rivers, ABC News, at the Foreign Desk. Inflation is holding steady, but prices are still stubbornly high. A new government report out this morning shows consumer prices ticked up just slightly during February compared to the month before. Checking the markets this hour, the Dow is up 99 points. You're listening to ABC News. More trouble for Boeing. ABC's Lionel Moise has the latest. The New York Times reports the company has failed 33 of the 89 audits the FAA conducted after a door panel blew off in mid-flight. Investigators later found four bolts were missing. The FAA also conducted 13 audits of Boeing supplier Spirit Aerosystems. Seven reportedly resulted in a failing grade. We also learned this morning that a Boeing whistleblower was found dead at age 62 in his home. Consumer prices rose 3.2% in February compared to a year ago. That's the second time this year that inflation has been higher than expected. The higher day-to-day costs help explain why more households are dipping into their savings. 
The latest human space mission has ended successfully after a 199-day mission. Four members on board the SpaceX Dragon splashed down off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. Teenagers say they feel better after taking a break from their cell phones. But at the same time, good luck trying to get them to give up those phones. Nearly three quarters of U.S. teens say they feel happy or peaceful when they don't have their phones. That's according to a new report from the Pew Research Center. The survey also found that despite the positive associations with going phone free, most teens have not limited their phone or social media use. The report comes as policymakers and children's advocates are growing increasingly concerned with teens' relationships with their phones and social media. Most teens said the benefits of having a smartphone outweigh the harms for people their age. I'm Shelley Adler. 819 Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Uh, Amanda, right now it's uh, still busy in several spots. Let's start with I-15, which is going to cost uh, an extra couple of minutes coming between Point of the Mountain and Bangor Highway. That's where you'll hit the brakes again uh, around uh, 90 south up towards 215. Bangor and Mountain View much better than they were at their peak busy, but you will wait at intersections 9800, 47th, and 3500 south to get through. And then coming south from Ogden, uh, we have the, the slowing in Riverdale and Roy cleared, but there's still stop-and-go traffic from 215 to about Warm Springs Road. Eric? Well, the pace isn't slowing down too much. It is uh, pretty congested northbound I-15 in Lehigh getting up to Point of the Mountain. But uh, because of the crash, uh, we're not seeing any major slowdowns. So the crash is being cleaned up, though. It's up against the left barrier. Uh, the uh, pace all the way from Santa Gwen to Point of the Mountain uh, retains its normal uh, structure, and you've got a 30-minute drive in store in front of you. If you're out on I-80 through the mountains. You've got some wet roads out there, and once you go past the Kimball Junction exit, some slowdowns approaching the Silver Creek exit if you're eastbound. Transform your outdated kitchen with half-priced granite. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite starting at $25 per square foot installed. Visit halfpricedgranite.com. Affordable luxury. Eric Butler and KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 a forecast has the inclement weather in the first half of the week. We'll go 49 today with a chance for showers through the evening hours. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers. And then we get some east winds on Thursday. Partly cloudy, 50 degrees. Could see the winds linger into Friday, 53 the high. High pressure takes over Saturday, 55. Sunday, 58. Hey, we're back to 61 on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now we do have some showers downtown and 45 degrees in the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Today we are following the future of Utah schools. Tonight is the first public meeting about what to do in the Alpine School District. There are a number of options on the table, six I think. Uh, one is to keep the district the way it is, and several others involve splitting the district in various ways. There's another public meeting tomorrow night and one on Thursday night as well. But tomorrow morning, we're going to look at a different angle of the future of Utah schools. And this one details how school choice may be affecting district population projections. This is so interesting because that, of course, affects the amount of money that your local school gets. And so that affects uh, taxpayers' wallets. So we'll focus on that tomorrow morning here on KSL. Make sure you join us for that. The news at this hour is sponsored by Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Revere Health is dedicated to making healthcare easier and more accessible by offering the latest technologies to improve the patient experience. We offer convenient telehealth appointments so you can receive care from the comfort of your own home. We also offer an online patient portal called Follow My Health that enables you to manage your healthcare online. When you download the Follow My Health app, you can exchange direct messages with your doctor, view lab and test results as soon as they are available, renew prescriptions, and review upcoming appointments. If you're ready to schedule your annual physical for 2024, we've made that easier too. Revere Health now offers the ability to schedule appointments online for primary care and select specialties. Visit our website at reverehealth.com to learn more or to schedule your next appointment online. Through these convenient solutions, Revere Health demonstrates its commitment to quality, patient-centric care every day. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner for life. Travel back to the magical world of ancient China with Shen Yu. And enjoy the incredible art of classical Chinese dance. Performances on March 20th and March 24th at Eccles Theater. Reserve your tickets today. If there's a problem during your siding, gutter, or window installation project, most contractors will try to hide it, ignore it, or blame someone else. It's called passing the buck or turning a blind eye. 
or my favorite, finger pointing. My question is, where is the accountability? Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and look, sometimes problems just happen, no matter who you hire. Maybe the wrong color siding gets delivered, despite the order being placed perfectly, or maybe a downspout gets cut short. Honestly, it could be anything. At RGS Exteriors, mistakes are rare, but if something goes wrong, I can absolutely, positively, 100% guarantee you we'll never hide it and we'll never pass the buck. We'll make certain everything turns out right for you. That's people over profits. That's the RGS Exteriors way. For a free estimate on siding, gutters, or windows, call 801-280-3110, rgsexteriors.com, rgsexteriors.com. Dave and Eugenific. We continue to follow the possible breakup of the Alpine School District. But one thing to remember when you split up a school district, you've got to double up all the administrative costs. I'll tell you statewide how much we spend today on Dave and Eugenovic. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Reddit is planning to go public, making it the first social media company to do so in years. They expect to price shares between $31 and $34 each. They'll start with 22 million shares offered. Airbnb is banning the use of indoor security cameras, regardless of their location. They were previously allowed in common areas like hallways and living rooms if it was disclosed on the listings page. To simplify the policy and protect privacy, no, none, no cameras will be allowed inside. Buffalo Wild Wings is celebrating March Madness by offering buy one, get one wing orders and, here's the fun part, a chance to beat a real life bubble, a buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo in a bracket. There's a lot of bees. Uh, the company is hosting Beat the Buffalo, where a real live buffalo will fill out a bracket. How? I have no idea. And fans will compete against the buffalo. All right, let's get a look at your money at this moment. Markets are up right now. The Dow's up 157. That's four tenths percent. We're at 38,927. The SP is up 34. Five, that's seven tenths percent. The NASDAQ is up 137. That is nine tenths percent. Add some extra minutes to your morning commute if you're northbound on I 15 from Sandy to Murray this morning. We've got some slowdowns there. We'll check it next on KSL News Radio. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. What was that? That is Business Phone Bliss with the UMA Cloud Phone System. It handles all our voice, video, and messaging needs. You sound very... Calm? I am. UMA has everything I need to run my business more efficiently, like virtual receptionist, call routing and video conferencing, and it starts at just $19.95 per month per user, plus taxes and fees. UMA. Nice. Find your business calm at UMA.com slash radio. All in together now, we can make it better, can we do it? We do it. We'll open it up. Because we know how to jump. Moving and eating better every day can help make you and your kids healthier. Search We Can online to find out more. A message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. Saturday, in front of a sellout crowd. 14, 10, and 5 for Spencer Johnson in his final home game as a BYU Cougar. Couldn't happen to a better guy. BYU clinched its place in the Big 12 tournament. These seniors have been so incredible for us and so special, and I'm just so proud of these guys. This week, the Cougars play in their first ever Big 12 postseason. Special extended pregame starts Wednesday at 9 a.m. with tip-off at 10.30 on Utah's legacy home of the Cougars, KSL News. Radio. 829 traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And back over to you, Andy. Well, man, it looks like the rain's starting to hit the roads. That's part of the reason for a little bit of the slowing on South 15 North Salt Lake into downtown itself. Got some stop and go on I 15 at the Bluffdale Bangator exits and at uh, 90 South going up towards the 215 interchange. SR 201 has suddenly started to back up again between 215 and Redwood Road, even a little bit past the Redwood exit heading towards I 15. Eric? 
in Utah County, I-15 is uh, experiencing some uh, extra volume, uh, but uh, right now no slowdowns, uh, even where we had an accident. Uh, looks like a tow truck's about to haul off the last of the components of that one crash uh, between Timpanogos Highway and Point of the Mountain. Right now you're still looking at a 20-minute drive northbound from Provo to Point of the Mountain along the 215 East Belt. No difficulties there. Uh, and Foothill Drive still experiencing some slowing from 2100 South up to the Sunnyside intersection, a little bit up towards Mario Capecchi, too. I-80 out into the mountains, uh, that's looking good, although you do have wet roads uh, uh, through a large part of it uh, from Lambs Canyon up to Jeremy Ranch uh, past Kibble Junction. You do have some eastbound brake tapping as you approach the Silver Creek exit. Use Superior Water and Air for all your HVAC and plumbing needs. Call 974-9090 or visit superiorwaterandair.com. Superior Water and Air, we got this. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. You starting to see the rain yet? We've seen it in very par- uh, various parts of the valley already. We'll have rain off and on all day today with a high of 49 degrees. Overnight, when it gets cold, we might see a little bit of snow here in the valley, but snow in the mountains for sure. And then the rain snow tapers off tomorrow. We start to warm up again on Thursday. We will have some strong winds, though. Watch out for those Wednesday night into Thursday. And it gets all the way back up to 61 degrees by next Monday. Right now, it's 45 downtown. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 8:30. Tim has the day off. Our top story this hour tonight is the first chance for people to comment on proposed changes to the Alpine School District. Some of those involve splitting the district. The district hired out of state MGT Consulting to study what they could do to accommodate the steady growth they continue to see to this day, and the company came up with six options, which very from keeping Utah's largest school district together to splitting it into two, maybe even three different school districts. They'll hold the first public meeting where people can comment on their proposals tonight at Timpanogos High School in the auditorium at 7 o'clock. They'll have another meeting at Vista Heights Middle School tomorrow night and one more at American Fork Junior High on Thursday. Adam Small, KSL News Radio. There is a long list of required steps to create a new school district in Utah. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gerd takes a look at the process. Currently, there are three ways to begin the process of creating a new school district, either through a citizen's initiative petition at the request of the local school board or at the request of a city within the boundaries of the school district. The petitions or requests will then go to county clerks, an advisory board, a feasibility study, public meetings, a county election. Also, the Alpine School District isn't the only district seeing a lot of growth. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera has been looking at that part of the story. Even though Utah County holds the top spot in population growth, Nate Curry with the Wasatch Front Regional Council points out Salt Lake and Davis counties are their own hotspots for development. Southwest Salt Lake County, that's definitely experiencing a ton of growth. But also there's, you know, like the infill growth that's occurring. Uh, and, and you look at places like, you know, downtown Salt Lake City with all of the new housing that's being built there or around Farmington Station, for example. Curry said with different types of growth occurring, that gives Utahns choices of where they want to live and choose the lifestyle that suits their situation. But as our landscape evolves, let's hope our strategy for schools can keep up. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. President Biden released his budget wish list. This budget reflects the priorities of the president as he hits the campaign trail. He was talking about this yesterday in New Hampshire. He is traveling to Wisconsin and Michigan this week, and they're going to say, look, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we want Congress to actually move forward on. And they won't, but he can say this is what we're trying to get done and deliver for you. ABC's White House correspondent Karen Travers says get ready to hear a lot about Social Security and low or costs for families on the campaign trail. Members of Congress will hear a classified briefing today on the security and potential ban of TikTok. ABC's M. Wynn reports. The company says a ban would trample the First Amendment rights of 170 million Americans. People who make a living on TikTok videos have flooded Capitol Hill opposing the bill. 90% of our sales are on TikTok shop and we would basically, I mean, we would lose all of our customers. At a national security hearing yesterday, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned the Chinese government may be able to use TikTok to control software on millions of users' devices. Wynn says a vote on the future of TikTok should happen tomorrow. Four deer were killed and left to rot, and the Division of Wildlife Resources wants to find out who did it and why. This is a really strange case. These four were all bucks, and their hunter took their heads and left their bodies. 
We know it was a hunter because the Division of Wildlife Resources says it found rifle wounds on the bodies, and it appears the animals were killed around the time of last fall's muzzleloader hunt season. Now, these are just a few bodies in a larger trend of illegal hunting in Utah. Last year, over a thousand fish and wild animals got killed illegally, and the Division of Wildlife Resources says that's a loss of $619,000. Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. First look traffic now on a Tuesday morning, and here is Andy Farnsworth. And Amanda traveled on I 15, still struggling in a couple of spots. South 15, still pretty heavy, North Salt Lake to downtown on some slightly wet roads. You've got some more wet roads on I 80 and Parley's Canyon. Uh, speeds are increasing now in Midvale on the northbound side of things, uh, but we've got some SR-201 backups near Redwood Road to deal with as well. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. UDOT says they are looking at Mountain View Corridor safety concerns after two fatal accidents in a month. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson explains. Initial reports show accidents at the same intersection in West Valley City were caused because of running a red light. However, UDOT spokesperson John Gleason says anytime there's a fatal accident, they look at the road from an engineering standpoint to see if there's anything they can improve. Because people tend to take that roadway at a high rate of speed, in recent years they've added more red light warning signals before intersections and made the lights wait a few seconds longer to turn green. Gleason says they will do all they can to make sure the roads are as safe as possible and it's important for everyone to follow all the rules of the road. Haiti's prime minister has resigned. ABC's Matt Gutman reports several armed gangs have been demanding the resignation for weeks. All parties involved have agreed to what's called a transitional presidential council, which essentially will be made up of seven different people within Haitian society, those people yet to be named, who will essentially act collectively as Haiti's president until elections can be had. Quick reminder for our listeners, Haiti's president, Jovenel Moïse, was assassinated in July of 2021. That is why Ariel Henry, the acting prime minister, came to power two and a half years ago and has been in power ever since. The country was in chaos over the weekend when gangs took over government buildings and airports to prevent the prime minister from re-entering the country. 30 million Americans are facing prescription drug shortages, and Utah is one of the states struggling the most. We're second in the nation for prescription shortages, and to paint a more specific picture, nearly 400,000 Utahns are struggling to refill their prescription, and they're facing the adverse health effects as a result. Now, as for the cause, the FDA points towards several potential reasons, including manufacturing and quality problems, along with high post-pandemic demand and lower generic drug costs. So to address this, looks like the administration is trying a few things, like prolonging shelf life when appropriate and speeding up the process to evaluate and authorize new production facilities. Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. I-80 looks pretty wet through Parley's Canyon right now, and that crash northbound I-15 in Lehigh has been cleared. So hopefully that's improving there. But we'll check it. Traffic and weather together coming up next. Spend time with KSL News Radio and get a deeper understanding of the world around us. I do listen to KSL so much because you've got voices like Boyd Matheson. I listen to him every day. You can trust him. Inside Sources, weekdays 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. Can we talk about something difficult to discuss? Are you going through a difficult financial time? You have equity in your home, but nobody can help. I'm Jason Erskine with American Home Loans, and we have created the Bridge Loan Program to use your equity regardless of your credit at this time. The bridge loan can be used to pay debts, collections, IRS liens, divorce settlement, or just simply improve your property. Give us a call at 801-262-2221. This loan creates a bridge between now and a much brighter future. During COVID, one of our clients had over $85,000 on credit cards. Their scores were too low to borrow on their home. We were able to save them $2,000 a month, and after eight months, they qualified for a conventional loan and improved their situation. Look, the consultation is free. Please let us see what we can do for you. Call 801-262-2221. That's 801-262-2221. Or go to AmericanHomeLoans.com. That's AmericanHomeLoans.com. NMLS 245422, Equal Housing Lender. Jeff Kaplan. When I was a kid, my parents got me a subscription to Newsweek magazine. I would devour every page into the night. And to this day, I sit on my iPad looking for stories for my minute of news, flesh out our coverage, and I get to share the news with you. Jeff Kaplan's Afternoon News, 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. Are any of you going to the first public meeting tonight for the Alpine School District? 
Boy, if you do and you feel like sharing with me tomorrow morning what your experience was like and what was said, I'd sure love to hear from you. We will be reporting on that first meeting tonight about what to do in the Alpine School District. There's another meeting tomorrow night and then a third meeting, I believe, on Thursday night. So keep it here for complete coverage of what to do with our expanding school districts here in the state of Utah. 839 now, traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, still have that delay on the 21st South Freeway going from... Uh, uh, 215 over towards Redwood and a little bit past. Uh, th- slowdowns have broken up in Midvale and Murray, but they seem to be sticking around near the 106 south exit and then coming down the hill between Bluffdale and Bangor Highway. If you're traveling south from Ogden, uh, you're fine on I-15 until you get to around 2300 north in Salt Lake City. That's where we still have a little bit of a delay uh, coming out of Davis County. Eric? Along the 215 eastbound, that looks okay going up towards Foothill Drive. Uh, Foothill, though, experiencing some delays as you go from Parley's Way up to about 1700 south. I-80 out into the mountains, that's wet, and you do have some delays after you go by the Kimball Junction exit for eastbounders westbound into Park City from US-40. That's also slow on Kearns Boulevard. And we still have some slowing uh, going by what used to be a crash site uh, approaching point of the mountain. The crash has been cleared, but there's a touch of brake tapping before you get into Salt Lake County. Call 801-288-ZERO and get Celebrate Utah's Cleaning Week. One room clean starting at just $25 with a four room minimum and 25% off all other services. Use promo code CLEANWEEK ZERO RES. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Low pressure moving into the west coast. That'll bring some rain showers today. High of 49. Overnight dipping off to 33. Tomorrow, 42 rain snow showers possible. Then we'll bring in some wind on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. I got a text a little while ago that said it's sort of foggy at Parley Summit and visibility is low. If you're in that area, watch out for that. And our temperature right now is 46 degrees. Coming up, testifying right now before Congress is the special counsel Robert Herr from the Justice Department who was assigned to investigate the classified documents found in President Biden's home. We'll share a little bit of what he has to say coming up next on KSL, streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We are Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. I love being a bartender. I love waiting tables. But at the end of my shift, my feet were killing me. And so I had to pretend like I was having a good time. And really, I couldn't wait to sit down. But it wasn't just my feet, it was also my knees were achy. A lot of neck pain too. I was in so much pain, I kind of lost hope, really. And then I saw the Good Feet store and that's when everything changed. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Kristen enjoy their work again without their feet getting in the way. It was pretty shocking to realize that I'd been in so much pain and suddenly I'm completely pain free. Now that I have the Good Feet Arch Supports, I don't have to pretend to be happy. I'm genuinely happy. So, cheers. My name is Kristen, and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Stop by the Good Feet store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1-800-NEW-FEET or visit goodfeet.com. Discover the power of hands-on learning at Tooele Technical College with an affordable, flexible, and achievable technical education. Apply today at tooeletech.edu. tooeletech.edu. You wouldn't know it, but most financial advisors are put in a box. I'm Jeff Jr. from Trajan Wealth, and I want to provide you a little insight about financial advisors. Most financial advisors have to sell what their company requires them to sell. And many advisors have to only adhere to what's called a suitability standard. A suitability standard is a limited standard of care, not requiring what's sold to be best, just suitable. Advisors with this loose standard often have limited investment and product selection. Trajan Wealth is held to a fiduciary standard, which is the highest standard of care in the advisory business. And that's just one of the many reasons we have billions of dollars under our care and attract clients from other advisors. Raise your standards today and call Trajan Wealth. Call 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. 
Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Dave and Dijanovic. One person described it like this. I like having a thousand one-minute conversations. So often we think we've got to dive in head first and know everything before we can speak on something. No, we can have a bunch of little conversations. There's more than one opinion and more than one opinion or viewpoint matters. I want our listeners to walk away from the show knowing that more than one opinion is valid. Listen for Dave and Dejanovic 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. My savings are gone. Okay, where were they last? Here, right before I spent them on the vacation to Aruba. Weird. Not weird. Not saving now means no money later. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. KSL News Time 844. <laughs> The three things you need to know this hour. First, tonight is the first public meeting about several proposals to change or split the Alpine School District. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Smoltz. Second, members of Congress will hear a classified briefing today on the security threats involved with the TikTok app. Third, traffic and weather together. Traffic is still uh, running slow in a few spots, including 201 near Redwood Road, northbound 15 between Bluffdale and Sandy, and southbound 15 North Salt Lake into Rose Park. With Foothill back up still there for traffic trying to get up to the U of U. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Wet weather back in the forecast and even some wind. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now it's 46 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios and time for KSL's top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. Robert Hur, the special counsel who investigated the discovery of classifying documents in Joe Biden's Delaware home, is on Capitol Hill right now, testifying about his report, which determined no criminal charges were warranted. An aid ship loaded with some 200 tons of food set sail for Gaza today on a pilot program for the opening of a sea corridor to the territory. Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry announcing early today he is resigning. Once a transitional council is in place, his country overwhelmed by violent gangs. This is ABC News. This is a developing story right now. Special Counsel Robert Hur testifying right now before members of Congress about his report into the classified documents found at President Biden's Delaware home. Why don't we listen in to a bit of his testimony? This is the House Oversight Committee. The need to show my work was especially strong here. The Attorney General had appointed me to investigate the actions of the Attorney General's boss, the sitting President of the United States. I knew that for my decision to be credible, I could not simply announce that I recommended no criminal charges and leave it at that. I needed to explain why. My report reflects my best effort to explain why I declined to recommend charging President Biden. I analyzed the evidence as prosecutors routinely do by assessing its strengths and weaknesses, including by anticipating the ways in which the president's defense lawyers might poke holes in the government's case if there were a trial, and seek to persuade jurors that the government could not prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. There has been a lot of attention paid to language in the report about the president's memory, so let me say a few words about that. My task was to determine whether the president retained or disclosed national defense information willfully. That means knowingly and with the intent to do something the law forbids. I could not make that determination without assessing the president's state of mind. For that reason, I had to consider the president's memory and overall mental state and how a jury likely would perceive his memory and mental state in a criminal trial. These are the types of issues that prosecutors analyze every day. And because these issues were important to my ultimate decision, I had to include a discussion of them in my report to the attorney general. The evidence and the president himself put his memory squarely at issue. We interviewed the president and asked him about his recorded statement. Quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. He told us that he didn't remember saying that to his ghostwriter. He also said he didn't remember finding any classified material in his home after his vice presidency. And he didn't remember anything about how classified documents about Afghanistan made their way into his garage. My assessment in the report about the relevance of the president's memory was necessary and accurate and fair. Most importantly, what I wrote is what I believe the evidence shows and what I expect jurors would perceive and believe. So the special counsel, Mr. Hur, is continuing to take questions from the committee right now. 
Uh, I do believe that uh, Mr. Nadler is, is, that's Representative Jerry Nadler, who is the Democrat ranking member on the Judiciary Committee. He's questioning him right now. We'll continue to follow it throughout the morning and bring you any updates here on KSL News Radio. That's the in depth at 15 and 45, 849 now. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And back to you, Andy. Amanda, travel on I-15, still running slow in several spots, including at the Bluffdale exit. Uh, right now, if you're passing 123rd, especially in the right lanes, you'll have to come to a stop momentarily. And then more delays back again in Midvale. We've got Bangor slowing down, coming down the hill in Taylorsville towards 4700 South. And traffic stopped. We, we've got appears to be a stalled vehicle in the middle lane now, just before you get to 215. We were already seeing slowdowns between Bangor and Redwood, but this is making it worse. Eric? Over on Foothill Drive, expect slowdowns once you get off of I-80 or the 215 eastbound. And it's going to remain slow uh, for most of the way, all the way up to the sunny side intersection. I-80 into the mountains, you have had some wet roads this morning. But right now, the uh, delay we don't have any real delays uh, going out to the Kimball Junction exit. But you exit there, you do have some slowdowns heading south on 224. I-15, Utah County, we still got delays uh, north of Timpanogos Highway. This is approaching point of the mountain where we had an earlier crash. Now's the time for a gorgeous new Nilsen home. Beautiful move-in ready townhomes to Rambler communities. Maintenance free for all life stages. See what's new for you at NilsenHomes.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 8 forecast. We've got some wet weather back in the 7 day. 49 today with a chance for showers. 42 tomorrow, rain, snow, showers. Then it's partly cloudy Thursday with a high of 50 but east winds possible, not only Thursday, but potentially into Friday with a high of 53 there. Saturday, 55, high pressure building. Sunday, 58, sunny skies, mostly sunny and 61 by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, let's see. That's pretty cloudy. We've got some showers downtown, too. 46 degrees. And the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Any of you watching the game this morning? I think it's at 1030. It's UCF takes on Oklahoma State. And this is important, of course, because the winner of that game goes up against our BYU Cougars tomorrow morning. So, who do you who would you rather have, UCF or Oklahoma State, as a, an opponent tomorrow? We'll be ha- we'll be having the uh, the broadcast for you tomorrow. Ten thirty is the tip for BYU and the winner of that game. In fact, we have special pregame coverage with Mitch and Matt tomorrow morning. Won't this be fun? I love I love March Madness. Uh, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, the special pregame coverage begins, and that is brought to you by Ryan Valuation, formerly Economic Partners. Coming up in just a moment, we'll take another look at money news here on KSL News Radio. Any Hour Services can help you make sure your furnace keeps you warm this winter. Whether you need a tune-up, a repair, or a second opinion about replacing it, call Any Hour Services or visit anyhourservices.com. This is Lisa Nichols from Intermountain Health with Your Life, Your Health. Kidney disease affects more than one in seven adults in the U.S., yet nine out of ten people are not aware of it. The kidneys are organs about the size of your fist, located in the middle of a person's back, whose primary function is to filter waste and fluid from the body's blood. Kidneys also control and adjust electrolyte levels in the blood and make hormones that help your body produce red blood cells that keep your bones healthy. Risk factors for chronic kidney disease include high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune diseases, anatomical defects, genetic diseases, obesity, and smoking. Intermountain Health is taking steps to evaluate every patient through their health care provider. There is a test called the Kidney Risk Score. It provides an estimate of a person's risk of kidney failure in the next five years using a standard blood and urine test during a visit to the laboratory. The Kidney Risk Score isn't done for every patient, but persons with diabetes or at higher risk for chronic kidney disease due to risk factors should have their Kidney Risk Score checked annually. However, Those with a kidney risk score higher than 5% should be referred to a nephrologist for individualized kidney health recommendations. For more information on kidney health, Intermountain Health suggests visiting minuteforyourkidneys.org or talking to your health care provider. I'm Lisa Nichols with Intermountain Health on KSL News Radio. 
Jeff Kaplan. When you're online, that's sometimes a source of fourth-hand information. Somebody does the reporting. Another website Googles. They find it. They rewrite it. And by the time you read it, you know the old game telephone. But KSL is a source of primary information. We have reporters on the street. They're out in the field finding out the details. And the difference between online and KSL News Radio night and day. Jeff Kaplan's Afternoon News, 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. Emergency medical unit, respond to 102 Maple Avenue, possible stroke victim. When stroke occurs, you have 60 minutes to win or lose the race of your life. There are new treatments, but you must get to a hospital fast. If you suddenly feel weakness on one side, have trouble speaking, walking, or seeing, it could be a stroke. Call 911. Get to a hospital. Because how you spend the next 60 minutes could determine how you spend the rest of your life. Stroke. Know the signs. Act in time. A message from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders in Stroke. The average text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop texts. Stoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Dave and the possible breakup of the Alpine School District. But one thing to remember when you split up a school district, you've got to double up all the administrative costs. I'll tell you statewide how much we spend today on Dave and Duchanovic. We're watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Tyson Foods is closing a pork plant in Iowa, laying off 1,200 workers. Pork sales dropped $70 million in the last year. It's the latest closure from the manufacturer. Tyson closed six chicken plants in the past year. Lego is making more money than ever. The toy company sales grew 2% last year, and that is despite the global toy industry sales slipping 7%. Many toy companies are struggling to get their groove back post-pandemic, but not Lego. They were one of the few that saw massive growth during the lockdown. KSL Drives Now Forward will spend $365 million to resolve allegations that the company violated federal tax laws by misclassifying and understating the value of imported cars. The Justice Department says Ford used these tactics from 2009 to 2013 on cargo vans from Turkey. Your money at this moment. The markets are up this morning. The Dow is up 289. That's three quarters percent. We're over 39,000 again, 39,052. The S&P is up 50. That's one full percent. The Nasdaq up 195. That is one and a quarter percent. Coming up in just a moment, looks like the 201 freeway delays continue for eastbound drivers approaching the 215 West Belt. Although that stalled vehicle has